Good evening. Welcome to DeSmet High School, where tonight the Spartans will play host to the Viani Golden Griffins. It is the Bomarito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week, brought to you by Vatteron College. With Isaac Bird, I'm Kevin Paulus, the Bomarito Automotive Group High School Game of the Week and uh, a key MCC matchup tonight, Isaac. It should be a good one. DeSmet and Viani, always a good matchup, but especially this year as both teams really looking for success. Both teams come into tonight's game really needing a win. Viani is one and four, but losers of the last four games. DeSmet's two and three and blown out of their last two games. But both offenses can light up a scoreboard, so it's going to be a good one. Let's talk about the players to watch tonight. First, the Elite Football Academy player to watch for the Golden Griffins. That is their quarterback, Tion Harris. The little big man, only 5'8", maybe 180 pounds, but he can do everything on the football field. So don't, don't let the size fool you. He's the ultimate joystick with the ball, especially on third down. That makes him really, really hard to defend. Cricket Wireless player to watch for the Dismet Spartans, Nick Martins. He is also their quarterback. He's a good one, too. 6'3". 210 pounds, southpaw. This sophomore loves to throw the ball down the field, and when you see him tonight, you're going to understand why. He puts a beautiful touch on the ball, and he always has a knack to throw receivers open, even when they're covered. Should be a great game tonight. Glad you're with us here on the Bomarito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week, brought to you by Vatterac College. I was sick of working dead end jobs. I wanted to have a career. Better, I gave me the hands on experience to build my future. The teachers are very good. The purpose of them coming to Vetterot is to learn a trade. As an instructor, I'm going to be there for them. They just made me feel like a brand new person. He's been working with me for some years, and I'm proud of him and the things that they have instilled in him. I want to follow in my dad's footsteps. But now I figured out through Vetterot, I could be better than my dad. Vetterot had really changed my life. And welcome to DeSmet High School, where tonight the Bomarito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week makes a stop as the DeSmet Spartans play host to the Viani Golden Griffins. I'm Kevin Paulus. Isaac Bird alongside will be joined shortly by the third member of our crew, Angela Sharp and Isaac. We talked a little bit about this in the open. This is a key MCC matchup. A couple of teams that have struggled as far as records are concerned, but really have been playing some pretty good football. Yes, especially offensively. Both offenses can really put up and light up the scoreboard. So it's gonna be a really exciting game. On, on Viani's side, Tion Harris is Mr. Do Everything. The problem with that style is if he, if, he, if he doesn't have a great game, then Viani struggles. And when it comes to DeSmet, Nate Martins is such a really good, polished quarterback to be so young. You saw just a moment ago the Viani Golden Griffins, and just a minute uh, the DeSmet Spartans going to bust through this banner right here, lined by all of their students there. And let's first talk about the Viani Golden Griffins. One in four on the season they won their first game over Pattonville a team that we saw just a couple of weeks ago and then four consecutive losses but four very very good football teams in Kirkwood and then Providence Catholic out of the Chicago area I believe the number two ranked 7A school in the state of Illinois and they lost a battle 55 to 52 and then a week ago a hard-fought loss to the Chaminade Red Devils who we saw a couple of weeks ago as well so the record can be a little bit deceiving for these Golden Griffins. Well, it's deceiving when it comes to offensively and defensively because offensively, they've put up a lot of points. This is a team that can put 40 on you in the course of a game. The problem is defensively, they've had a lot of trouble this year getting off the field on third down. They have to find a way to put DeSmet in third and long tonight, so I expect a lot of pressure from Viani. And the DeSmet Spartans, as I mentioned, two and four on the season, losses to Hazelwood Central, to St. Louis U High, and to CBC. So they are 0 and 2 in MCC action so far this year. But a couple of quality wins over Columbia Rockbridge and Fort Zumwalt West for first year head coach Robert Steeples. 
there's no shame losing a St. Louis U High or a CBC. We both know those two teams can really light it up. They have a really good offense. I love their philosophy. They spread it out wide. They have a young quarterback, a southpaw. He's a sophomore, but he makes all the throws downfield. He's, a, he's one of the guys that wants to throw the ball downfield, pushes it downfield. This is a high-octane offense, and Vianna's going to have trouble stopping them tonight. And the Smet Spartans are making their entrance. Good shot by our cameraman right there on the field, kind of making their way out, uh, not really as a group. They're just kind of meandering out of the locker room, so uh, obviously a little bit of a laid-back attitude as far as the Spartans are concerned as they get set for this one. And uh, we had a chance to talk to both coaches before the game. Robert Steeples, uh, funny because uh, we talked about this before, kind of coach speak a little bit. He goes, oh yeah, Viani, I consider them to be undefeated. Well, they're one in four, but they very well could be undefeated because of the quality of opponents that they played and how well they matched up. DeSmet, on the other hand, you know, winless a year ago and, and really trying to build something here under first year head coach Robert Steeples, who also, you know, graduated from here in 09 and, uh, and, and uh, comes from a good family as well, right? Absolutely, he's a cousin of mine. So, <laughs> which you found out about which, a half which I hour found ago. Out, no, about 15, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I'm down here talking to him on the field, and he started, you know, he says, hey, my, my uncle is um, Al Ledbetter, and um, he told he tells me that, that we're, we're cousins, and I'm like, wait a minute. How's your uncle? And so we start naming off names of family members. Like, dude, yeah, I guess we are family members. So it's, um, I wish him luck. And, you know, it's his first year getting off to a little bit of a rocky start. But um, he's expecting to turn it around. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, has done a good job so far. Two wins on the early season as uh, both teams are ready. We're lined in the sidelines. And we will have our national anthem momentarily here from DeSmet High School as we get set for the uh, Metro Catholic Conference matchup tonight between the Golden Griffins and the DeSmet Spartans. So we are, uh, I believe, waiting for the pet band to start. Oh, my fault. We're not really sure what they call, but you can see uh, several football players also involved in singing the national anthem tonight. So that's a nice touch as well. As so we get said, it's starting to cool off just a little bit. Pretty, uh, pretty warm as we got out here about an hour, hour and a half ago, Isaac. But uh, as the sun goes down and and uh, the lights come up, it's starting to cool off just a little bit. We're just a little bit of a touch of football weather starting to peek in now. Yeah, and both teams really want to get back to their winning ways. Both teams come in losing several games in a row. So it's all about trying to find and do anything to get over the hump to win a game. That's what tonight's about. It's about heart, it's about attitude, it's about execution, and finding a way, any way, to win the game. And when you're in that kind of mode, don't, don't be surprised if you see a reverse, a reverse pass, maybe an onside kick, anything to, to, to get an advantage in an extra possession. Absolutely, you see the captains meeting there at midfield for the coin toss. Robert Steeples, you can see him 
Uh, just kind of a younger generation, hat on backwards, got the dreads halfway down his back. He's the head coach of the DeSmet Spartans, obviously taking over for Pat Mahoney after last year, who uh, the uh, longtime head coach here at DeSmet High School. As, uh, as we get set for this one, the uh, lead official with last minute instructions for both teams, and uh, we are just about ready to flip it and get ready to roll. So what do you look for tonight in this game, Isaac? Uh, obviously two teams that uh, have not had a great deal of success uh, so far in the year, but how do you think this game will unfold if you were to call it before we call it? Well, I, I, I think it's going to be a shootout. Both teams want to go fast. Both teams going to spread the offense. When it comes to Tion Harris at Viani, he's a guy that he loves to freelance. He's the ultimate freelancer. So on third down, he's really tough to really tough to defend because as a defense, you don't know if he's going to run it. You don't know if he's going to throw it. He'll look one way and start running around to give his receivers a chance to uncover to make plays. So I expect a shootout tonight, and maybe the last team win that has the ball is going to win it. Absolutely. It looks as though Viani has won the toss, and the Lions' choice Coin toss has been won by the Bianchi Golden Griffins. I would expect they will defer, and there you see the indication that uh, they did. So uh, they will defer to the second half. We'll spin them around, and as you can see there, the Desmet Spartans are going to move left to right here in the opening quarter. Viani clad in their black pants, white jerseys, and uh, their Michigan helmets, albeit black instead of maize and blue. I think I think Michigan uh, maybe copied off of Viani for their uniforms. What do you think? Look for Dismet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just going to ignore that one altogether. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, good, good. Look for Dismet to come out and try to take advantage of Viani's soft defense. Viani's given up a lot of points. And Nate Martins, the quarterback of this Met, loves to throw the ball deep. I'm looking for them to take some shots deep to, to at least try to loosen up that offense as they may try to stay balanced here to run the ball just a little bit if they're not able to get deep. So here we go as the teams make their way out onto the field. Viani will get the ball first. Oh, no, they deferred. I'm sorry. Viani will kick the ball off to Desmet and putting it up on the T. Jimmy Lowerman, number 22. He is a uh, sophomore, a uh, junior, sorry. As he will kick it, as you can see, right to left on your computer slash TV screen. We're glad you're with us. Should be a great one here tonight from DeSmet High School. The Golden Griffins and the Spartans get set to go. Looks to be almost a little confusion as far as the alignment already for Viani as Larman is uh, directing a little traffic, moving a couple guys around as we look back deep for the Spartans. Number 22, Hunter Shanig as well as looks like might be number 11, Grant Stegman. So here we go, the run up by Larman. It is in the air. Short kickoff will come down at about the 10 yard line. Shanig to the right side to the 15, out to about the 20, flag flies in. This one's coming back on an illegal block, but he still gets out to about the 34 yard line, but the flag flew in well behind the play, I believe. And they will check it. Yeah, it looks like possibly back at the 20 yard line. So they will get the indication. It will be a block in the back. Yes, it is a block in the back. So let's throw it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Angela Sharp. Hey there, guys. I'm down here on the sidelines of Desmet. I found the most comfortable chair in the place. As you can see, it's a toga night down here. These guys are hoping to cheer on for a victory. You know, we're streaming live on KSDK.com. You can check us back on Channel 11 Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Hopefully, it's going to be a good game. These guys are ready. Back to you guys. Angela look, looking uh, a little too comfortable down there, right in front of the uh, rowdy section of the Desmet Spartans. As we get ready to go, here we go. Desmet has the ball first, and their sophomore quarterback, Nate Martins, is under setter on first down. And the tailback on the play, Cameron Rogers, number 25. And the first play is Rogers running it right up the middle, moves the pile for about a gain of two. Cameron Rogers, the ball carrier. And that's how we get underway. Second down and eight coming up for the Spartans. So uh, as prolific as their uh, the potential, I guess, for their quarterback here at DeSmet, they come out running the football. So 
Probably just trying to keep them honest anyway and uh, maybe a few surprises up their sleeve. Yeah, and with the penalty, the penalty really hurt them. It put them back inside their own 20 yard line, so they really didn't want to make a, make a mistake there. Now it gives them a second down and long. Martins goes under center this time. It'll be Rogers to the right side, trying to get the corner and doesn't get there. He's going to lose yardage in a big way, tackled inside the 10 yard line. They'll give him progress. However, we're going to say he's down at about the 12. As we take a look at Harris, oh, go ahead. Outside linebacker reads it and gets up right field, right up on him. Good job by Jordan, wrapping him up. Even if you can't bring him down, look at him, wrapping him up, holding him up, waiting for the teammates to come before he's able to slam him down to the ground. Gilfoy with the tackle, Jordan Gilfoy. And now back to pass, Martins throws and threw it to no one in particular, was trying to find a cr crossing route to number 16 and uh, no dice there, 16 is Aluski. So a three and out to begin the game for the Spartans. Well, the kickoff return penalty really hurt them. They had the ball way out to around the, close to the 30 yard line without the penalty, then they're able to operate. The penalty puts them inside the 20. So then it shortens your playbook. So they come out with a couple of runs that don't work. So now it puts them in a third and long where the defense knows they're going to throw the ball and it's just very difficult to convert it at Should that time. Should be great field position for the Golden Griffins. Just a sky shot as far as the punt is concerned. Not returnable, but it does check up at about the 35-yard line. 35-yard line as we have a replay. Look at what happens to the punter here. And he gets run into and knocked down but no flag, and that would have been a big uh, big break for DeSmet, as there was clearly a lot of contact there, but no flag. Apparently they thought he was blocked into him or something. So Tion Harris and the Golden Griffins get their first crack at it from the 35-yard line. Harris will hand off right up the middle. The running back is gonna pick up about three or four yards, and that was number four, Mickey Morell. He's a junior. Not a whole lot there. Great Give job a gain by, of about three. Great job by Tyrell Mosey coming from his linebacker position right up the middle of that line, making a good tackle. So Morrell on first down. Now Harris rolls out to his right, looking, looking, throwing. Has a man, and it's caught. Down at about the 16-yard line. And we'll take a look at that one, number 17. This is what makes Tion so difficult because as the corner, you have to cover longer than you normally would against someone else. He's a good job of extending the play three, four, five seconds longer than normal, so we have to really try to cover it longer than normal. And now a run right up the middle, only getting about a yard, maybe two. That was Morrell, his second carry of the night. Now you have the entire playbook open here if you Viani, and I wouldn't be surprised if you have Tian come around the edge to give him a run pass option here. He's a very good runner. Looks like it may be a false start. Yeah, gonna be aided actually, I think, by a defensive offside. As Tian Harris, as they got set, looked like the Smet came across, and they did. So the first penalty of the night goes against the DeSmet Spartans. And this Viani offense really don't need any help. So especially down here in the red zone, it just gets them a little bit closer, makes it a little bit easier. And now Harris on a second down and four. He's going to run to the left side to the five, down to about the three into the end zone. Tion Harris with a touchdown. And the Golden Griffins on top, barely two and a half minutes into the game. Very ideal situation here for Viani to start this game. They get a three and out, force a punt, gets the ball in the plus territory. Here's Tiana around the left side, and he's a brick. I'll tell you what, he's not that high off the ground, only about 5'8", but he's oh, he's very wide shoulders and wide legs. You've got to bring it to, to bring him down. He's going to be tough to bring down all night. Tiana Harris, his third rushing touchdown of the season as the Golden Griffins and Jimmy Larman try to tack on the extra point. Before we get there, though, a flag flies in. Looks like that runner came in from the right side, offsides. Another defensive offside against the Spartans. 
And we'll see. Actually, it looks like they're going to put the offense out there. They're going to be at the one and a half yard line, try to put a two point conversion on the board now. Well, when you have Teon Harris, he's really a he's a running back playing quarterback. He can throw the ball very well, but he's he stays in a shotgun. Then he has a couple of guys in the backfield with him. He can just take the snap and go right behind him. Teon Harris not in the game though. Mickey Morrell lined up in the Wildcat formation jumbo package and now we have a flag fly in and this one could be against Viani however it is not it'll be at the three quarter yard line now as three consecutive penalties to start the game against the DeSmet Spartans Morrell in that wildcat formation Mickey Morrell will take the snap it's high he'll run it in two point conversion is good and Viani on top now by a score of eight to nothing. We'll take a break, we'll be right back. You are listening to, oh wait, we'll stick around for the uh, replay before we take the break as you see Morrell lined up in that Wildcat formation, direct snap, it is a little bit high. Just a big push up front. That's getting right behind the two players. Really no, it's it actually a great play when you get two penalties, get a ball at the one yard line, you might as well go for two, they did, was able to convert it. We'll stay right here as uh, both teams make their way back out onto the field. A good start to this game for the Viani Golden Griffins. Just 9-12 left to go. In the opening quarter, they already lead it by a score of 8 to nothing. Yes, it's an ideal start, actually, for Viani. Remember, their they're losers are their last four games. Got off to a, a good start, won their first game, then lost four games in a row. So they're looking for a feel-good win and try to get back into the winning column. So good start here. They got the, the offense on the plus side of the 50-yard line to a couple of plays. They got it in the end zone. Three and out for the Spartans on their first opportunity offensively. And they'll be looking to improve on that as they get it back here, barely 245 into the game. Pretty good crowd on hand here tonight as uh, taking in this MCC action mo like most high school stadiums around the area just stands on one side so it doesn't look like there's a lot of people here as you look at our camera angles but there actually is a pretty good crowd standing down here to our left as a matter of fact Larman will tee it up and this kickoff is a pooch kick they try to catch him sleeping and it looks like DeSmet did come up with it covering it up at about the 30 yard line. One of the very alert up men fall on top of that one. And this telecast being made possible by the support of Microsoft, helping people and business realize their full potential. It's one of those things that I talked about pregame that listen, both teams really need a win. So you may see an onside kick, you may see a reverse, reverse pass. You may see anything in this game to try to get an advantage. So the second opportunity for DeSmet begins at their 31 yard line. Martins in shotgun formation this time. Takes the snap back to pass. The left handed sophomore with a nice pass out to about the 50 yard line. And a nice completion to number 16, Jack Aluski. I like how Pick Nate up a stands 20 in yards. the pocket. I love how he stands in the pocket real nice and tall. There's the, the post route, and the ball is right on him in a hurry. Good job getting that ball to him before that safety comes over the top. And now the run by Rodgers on first and 10. Picks up about three. They will mix in the run. They have a really big and aggressive offensive line. They can move some guys around. They do a really good job of giving the quarterback a lot of time to throw the ball this offensive line. Mertens on the screen, off the hands of the intended receiver. And out of bounds. We're gonna send it down to the sideline and Angela Sharp. I have one of our sponsors from American Jeep Fitters. All right, guys, now I've seen the Jeep outside. What is the likelihood that I can afford that? Well, we've worked really hard to be able to offer all 13 and growing models of our Jeep Wranglers to anyone who's looking at several price points. Uh, the low end of what we have to offer blows away what most people have seen and we can put it in your garage for 
you know, the mid 50s. Now people look at that and uh, that's a reasonable price point for some and for some it's a lot of money. So we worked even harder to bring that into someone's garage uh, by offering trade-ins for their existing vehicle. All right, and how does that work? Well, basically, uh, as their Jeep is being built over a period of a couple of weeks, they continue to drive their vehicle. And when the truck shows up with their Jeep, it drops off the new vehicle, they take the old one off their hands, and it just disappears. I love it. How can somebody find you guys? They can find us on our website at jeepfitters.com. Uh, all the information you need for contact is there. The other thing we've done is we were able to offer 100% financing for the remaining balance of whatever's left. So it, it's not just the, the basic vehicle, the basic Jeep that they can finance. They can get a payment if they want that for the entire purchase price of the vehicle or what remains after the trade-in. Awesome. We'll definitely check out American Jeep Fitters. Back to you, Isaac and Kevin. Thank you, Angela, and thank you to American Jeep Fitters, a proud sponsor of the Bomberito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week, brought to you by Vatterack College. That last play, that time uh, Isaac Rogers tried to get the corner, but very quick, the Adi defense strung him out and about a six-yard loss. Yeah, great job by Devin Ward getting outside. He had outside contained there. He forced the running back back in and allowed his friends to come in and make the play. Martin's flushed out of the pocket. Long pass down the field and great defense. At the end of that play by the Viani cornerback, number 14, Hunter Barkham got there. Good closing speed by him to knock that one away at the last moment. Might have been a touchdown as we see the replay here. Barkham running with him step for step and then comes in late, kind of dropped off and then that good closing speed to knock it away at the last minute. Actually, my, my apologies, the play actually made by Devin Devries. 14 was there, but Devin actually made that play, number six. It's gonna be third in about 16 now for the Spartans. Martins, slant route and almost intercepted by Devries again. Miscommunication by the quarterback and the, re and the receiver. It, it looks as though Nate Martins was wanting the post route, so he throws the post. As he gets the ball here, looks to the right, now he's gonna throw the post right on the inside, and the receiver breaks to the corner on the outside, so it's just a miscommunication. That's gonna bring up fourth down. Fourth down for the Spartans, as uh, they will have to kick it away, and Matthew Meyer, number 86, is the punter for them. Coleman and Zerwig to re uh, receive, and another booming punt by the Dismet kicker Myers, and it's gonna check up. That's a great one. Gonna roll down at about the five yard line, and that is where the Golden Griffins will have an opportunity. I wanna remind you this telecast is made possible through the support of We Do Laundry. We love their support of high school football here on the Bomberito Automotive Group. High school game of the week. So Vianney, a long field in front of them. They're going to start at their own five-yard line. Already leading this one eight to nothing. 6.51 remaining in the opening quarter. Yeah, and it's important for Vianney not to get too cute down here. They're already up eight nothing, so they're in a good position. 6.51 less in this first quarter. They need to get a, a couple of first downs just so if they do have to punt, they can try to punt the ball back into this Mets territory. So I was expecting to come out and maybe run the ball a couple of times here to try to get a little bit of breathing room, but they have such a dynamic quarterback in Tion Harris that don't, and you can expect him to try to run it down here as well, and he plays running back at the quarterback position. He can do both. You see a good shot of the line of scrimmage as the Griffins get ready to go at it with a long field in front of them. Tion Harris will Stand in shotgun back at the goal line with Morrell to his left. Man in motion, and it's going to be an end around. This is Coleman. Gets out to the 5, the 10, out to about the 15-yard line. They'll give him a gain of 9. First touch of the night by Cam Coleman. He is their leading wide receiver on the season, and we'll see this uh, replay. Excellent camera work by the guys down on the field as Coleman gets the corner, good block to seal the corner, and he gets out to the 15. Yeah, good, great job by Adam Winter coming from his linebacker position, a 6'3", 245 senior. Good job of running down from behind. 
And this time it will be Harris still running right up the middle of the Spartan defense. Still a big push all the way out to the 32 yard line. And a pickup of 17 yards for Harris. This is one of the things that he does extremely well. That's why he's so difficult to defend. He can throw it, they put him on the edge, and this is just a design run. Right up the middle, now he's really elusive right there. He makes a guy miss, and then he's tough to bring down. He's short, but he's very tough to bring down. Harris throws a swing pass to the right side, and Zerwig, I believe, came up with it. And I will say it's incomplete. That was a long, long discussion before they decided that one did fall incomplete. So it will bring up a second down for the Spartans. This is a good or, excuse job. Excuse me, Golden Griffins. This is a good job by Viani of getting out from up under their own end zone in just a couple of plays. Now the entire playbook is open. Look for them to be put Tion Harris maybe on the run here. We can give an option to run in and throw it. Zerwig and Schuler lined up to the left side, and Harris is going to keep it. Lost his footing in the backfield, but still goes forward for a gain of three. going to be third down and seven now for the Golden Griffins. Place the ball down at the 35-yard line. Just past the midway mark of the opening quarter with Isaac Bird. I'm Kevin Paulus. Angela Sharp down on the field. Glad you're with us here on this Friday night. Harris throws to the right side. Hands a man. That's Coleman, I believe. Making men miss. Try to go east and west across the field. Stiff arms at the 35-yard line. And still going. Finally, they're going to lasso him out of bounds at about the 40. So a big pickup by Cam Coleman. Great job there as the sophomore, 5'11", 175-pound sophomore. This is what Tion Harris does very well. He scrambles and buys time, buys time, waits for the receiver to come out his break, then throws a strike right there to him. Now Cam very elusive. Puts the, he needs to put the ball away, but you see the speed and the agility. Once he gets this ball, you got to try to corral him. Gain of about 25 on the play. And a good drive put together now by the Golden Griffins. Morell's going to get a carry. Not a whole lot there for him. Give him a gain of about two. Eric Ahi, great job from coming from the offensive line, or coming from the D line, making this tackle. This D-line of DeSmet is going to have to really step up here. They're getting pushed around just a little bit too much, and I know they're outweighed by Viani's offensive line, but they got to get a little bit tougher. Toss sweep right side, Morrell, good blocking in front, and uh, coming up to make a pretty good stop there, actually, number 38. That is Zach Vehigi. Pickup of about five. Here's the pitch around to the right side. Guard and tackle pulling out front, trying to locate where to, then he just puts his head down right there and get as much as he can. As a running back, sometimes you have to know when the journey is over. And right there, the journey was over, he put two hands on the ball and fell forward. Harris, high snap, brings it down, gives it to Morrell. First down, a little bit more he could go, down to about the 15 yard line, inside the 15, and about the 13 yard line. Gain of 19 in the offensive line of the Golden Griffins really doing a great job. Absolutely, James Keeser right there, the seniors offensive lineman, 6'4", 255 pounds, springs him open. Harris rolls to his right, nothing there, cuts it back to the left, buys time with his feet, throws in the end zone, touchdown. Touchdown, Zerwig in the corner of the end zone. And that was all about the athleticism of Tion Harris to keep that play alive. Yeah, this is what makes him so difficult to defend because he can pull that ball down and then run it for 10 or 15 yards. Sometimes I just think he just breaks the play and gives his receivers just a chance to just outrun their guys. He scrambles to the right, runs out of room, comes back to the left, then gets his ball, gets his eyes right back down the field and throws a beautiful pass right over the outstretched hand of the defender for a touchdown. That's the problem that this Mets gonna have all night defending Harris. Jimmy Larman will boot it through and Viani leads this one with 3.40 left to go in the opening quarter. They're up 14 to nothing. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. You are watching the Bomberito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week brought to you by Vanderont College. <laughs>
and welcome back to the Welcome back to DeSmet High School as the Biani Golden Griffins lead this one 15 to nothing over the DeSmet Spartans. I'm Kevin Paulus with Isaac Bird alongside. Angela Sharp, our sideline reporter, will join her in just a little bit. It's been a great start to this one by the Golden Griffins. Absolutely, it's a wonderful start. They couldn't have drawn it up better than this. On the road of 15 nothing here in the first quarter. 15 nothing is... Our score comes down at about the five yard line and running to the right side and had a hole briefly, gets all the way out to about the 25 yard line. Hunter Schoenig with that. So decent field position for the Spartans to begin this third drive of the game for them. Well, if you're dismissed now, you may have to maybe abandon the run here and just put the ball into Nate Martin's hands and have him try to throw them back into this game. He's very capable of doing it. This offense is very vertical based. When they, when they spread them out like they are now, look for some deep passes. And you see Martins is in shotgun formation, waits for a man to come across, back to pass, and across the middle, almost intercepted, goes off of the hands of two Griffins and falls incomplete. This passing game is just a little bit off tonight. A couple of times you've seen that the quarterback throws the ball one way, the receiver throws, runs them the, the opposite way. There it looks like the receiver wasn't too ready for the ball when it came to him. Martins takes the snap, option to the right side and makes himself skinny and gets a big pickup all the way out to the 35 yard line. Martins rushes for 10 yards. At this point, you have to do whatever you can. Here's Martins right now going to the right. I thought he'd give it up right here. Doesn't. Makes a good move, two good moves to get up. He knows exactly where that first down marker is and dives ahead for it. It's the third first down of the game for the Spartans. The next carry just stays in between the tackles. I believe that's Rogers. And it is. Yeah, the thing that has to change around for Dismet is the offensive line needs to protect a little bit more and open up the holes for that running game, and their defensive line really needs to stand up more and to, to stop Viani's offense. Martin's the option to the right. This time he is met as he tried to get the corner. Big stick that time by Lucas Geigling. The linebacker came up and really put a helmet on a helmet. That was just a great job there reading the play. This is a, exactly the same play that Dismet ran two plays ago when he kept it, now he's not gonna go for the pitch at all. He's gonna go right for the running back. That's exactly how you play that. You have to force the quarterback to make the pitch. Third and 13 situation. I think the Spartans wanna talk about it as the officials will concur or confer, I should say. I know that word, I promise. And Viani's running off the field, but there is no timeout. I don't think the officials are waving him back onto the field. I'm not sure what the whistle was about. And you see there, pointing to the Viani personnel, maybe to the sideline as well. I'm not sure what the... Uh, I think I think because the helmet came off of the, the player, maybe he has to leave the field for one play because of that. That would have been Lucas Geigling, I guess, who is came he up out to there uh, now? number 34. I don't think he is, actually. He is. So that might have been what it was. They wanted to send him off the field for one play. And Martin's low snap lost it. Now he's going to look left. He's going to throw left. He has a man, and it's dropped right through the hands of the intended receiver. That was Shonig, Shonig, excuse me, coming out of the backfield. This is a really good job by, by Martin dropping the ball then get his eyes back up the field, avoids the rusher, then finds his shallow cross receiver, and he just needs to make a play. This is, these are the plays that this met has to find a way to make tonight because it keeps the chains moving. If he makes that play and breaks a tackle, he runs down the sideline and picks up first down. He didn't do any of that, now it's fourth down. Zerwig and Coleman will stand back, but that is going to be kicked out of bounds. Or no, it did stay. It checked up, and it takes a good uh, Desmet bounce inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. And, I'll say one thing, the uh, punting game for DeSmet lacks nothing. Matthew Meyer just really put some air under that football. 
Yeah, this man has to find a way now to get off the field. They have to be able to force Viani into third down and long and then get off the field on third down and get this offense back to ball. Support for this telecast provided by Noodles and Company. Real cooking, real food, real flavors. Find us online at noodles.com. And you yeah. can see here before the game, what's going on here, Isaac? Something that I should be a part of that I wasn't. Now I'm a little bit upset. Again, this is like the third week in a row that these guys are getting something to eat and I'm not involved in it. Maybe I have to come earlier. I don't know. Maybe I have to. I'm just a low man on the totem pole, I guess. And the thing Jeez. about that is, Isaac, that happened like 20 feet from us. How do we not know? They're like they're they're hiding behind the press box from us, next eating week, their noodles. Next and week that won't happen. Trust me. We do appreciate Noodles and Company and their sponsorship of the Bomberito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week, brought to you by Vatterot College. The next uh, series for Viani starts with Tion Harris dropping back to pass, long pass down the right side for Coleman. Got it. At the 40-yard line, what a hookup between Harris and Coleman. This is a great job by Coleman getting a little bit of separation with a push with the right hand. Great design here. Throws it deep. Watch the push right there to get a little bit of separation. Wasn't called. Great job, great throw, great execution. Right when you think Viani would try to sit on the ball and try to take some time down, they go deep and complete it. Coleman, two catches, unofficially 61 yards in the game. That time, Tion Harris throws, I believe, what might be his first incomplete pass of the night. I might yeah. have missed one. Yeah, Tion does a better job rolling to the right and throwing to his right. When he rolls to the left, the ball tends to carry and float on him a little bit, just like it did there. When he rolls out, you'll see he'll roll to the right most of the night. Second down and 10, the ball on the 40-yard line, just inside the 40. And right before the snap, our officials want to talk about it once again. And the Viani offensive line is clapping because of another defensive encroachment penalty against DeSmet. They had three on that uh, extra point try, as a matter of fact, <laughs> or two on the extra point try, and then this one here. Already five penalties in the game against DeSmet. Now it's going to be Morrell to the right side on a second down and five. He gets cut down after a short gain, and it'll bring up third down and three. This defense of DeSmet has to make a stop. There's, they just can't go down by three scores here. They're already down by two. The offense is struggling. They need a spark. They need something from the defense to spark this offense. They need a turnover or they need to get off the field here on third down. It will be a third and three. And it will be Harris. He'll run up the middle, has the first down, gets inside the 25 to the 20, down to about the 17-yard line. Pickup of 16 for Tion Harris. This is all about the offensive lineman, James Keister, number 64. The number 73, watch him on the right side. He pulls from left to right, and he gets up right there on the linebacker. Watch him drive him all the way back. That actually springs Tion Harris for the first down. So this big offensive line of Vianney is starting to take over. They're back over the football. They look to the sideline for those last second adjustments before the snap from the 16. Harris is going to run it again, picking his way through the defensive line, finding a little bit of running room inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. Give him the 7, so that's a gain of almost 9 yards on first down. Yeah, now Deion Harris is really making a making an early statement in this game. Running right behind Jake Lyons on that right side. The senior, 6'1", 275. This line is very big, strong, and productive. Mickey Morrell in the Wildcat formation, but before the snap, DeSmet says, hang on a minute, we want to talk about this as uh, that jumbo formation. And while they talk about that, DeSmet and Viani talk about it. We're going to go down to the sideline and Angela Sharp. 
I have Maurice from Dead and Dead On Sports. I keep doing that to you, and I know it's Dead On I'll Sports because we saw it. You guys operate with colors and patterns, right? Right, colors and patterns. We use colors and patterns that are easy to analyze and recognize. Tonight, I'd like to talk a little bit more about how we build accuracy. We use our colors and patterns, obviously, to build accuracy, but we start with an 18-inch circle. The target is, uh, is 18 inches at 15 yards. Once they get proficient at the 18-inch circle, we move them down to the 15-inch circle. Uh, at the same yardage, we use the 15-yard mark as, our, as our, most of our marks. And as they get better with the 15, we move them to the 12. Now, admittedly, the 12 can be very frustrating to hit. It's a very tight circle to go for. Uh, but once we take the 12 off and go back to the 18, they see how much better they've gotten because we've zoned them down from 18 down into the 12. Then we bring them back to the 18, and the mind can pick that up, and their accuracy just builds from there. That that's is awesome. pretty much how we do the accuracy. And that's that's most beneficial for the quarterback. Absolutely beneficial for the quarterbacks and the long snappers alike. But if, the other part about the quarterbacks is they can see exactly where the ball hit. So they can make those adjustments as they're throwing. Say they got five balls in front of them, they got five good throws, uh, two of them missed. They know exactly where they missed that. So you know what they need to do to, to get themselves back into dead on. To work on back. And how early can someone start using your product? Oh, we have kids as little as six and five-year-olds. The flag football guys are using it. And actually, we found that at the Elite Training Center that the younger they are, the better they are when they get up like the guys at CBC, like Gabbard and uh, McGovern at uh, at, at uh, Chaminade. We know that from those guys growing up with it now over the last five years, look how much better they've gotten. We love it. How can somebody find you guys? Uh, well, we just signed a licensing agreement with Shut Sports. So anybody that Shut deals with, you can get it through them this year. Uh, BSN. Uh, Kurt Smith, Amazon, uh, and deadonsports.com. Love it. Thank you very much. Back to you, Isaac and Kevin. Big doings on the field as the uh, interview was going on. It looked like the Ani was going into the end zone, but you saw the replay here, the high snap over Morell's head. And the ball ends up all the way, if I'm not mistaken, all the way out about the 35-yard line. That was the kick right there and uh, can't pick it up. Again, not able to get a handle on it, but eventually at the end of this play, you're going to see the Spartans will cover it up. That ball was squirting around like a grease pig underneath there. Yeah, Perry Bryant tried to pick it up with one hand and actually moved it up to about 15 yards down the field. But that's the break that DeSmet needed. I was just talking about how they needed, they needed a spark. They needed something defensively to go right for them to get their offense back on the field. They, you know, going down by three scores after one quarter was going to be extremely tough to come back, especially playing against a, a quarterback who has dynamic as Tion Harris is. So that's a big turnover there. Now it gives them a shot to get back in this game. Now, Harry, they're, or excuse me, Isaac, they're doing, so I had to hurry on my brain, sorry, but Isaac, they're doing something here that is kind of strange. Well, I guess they took the last second off the clock from the second, from the first quarter. We moved to the second quarter. There was 1.2 seconds left on the clock. They wiped it out and just moved us to the other end of the field. So first quarter in the books, 15 to nothing. Viani on top as DeSmet will, as you can see, move from our right to our left in the second quarter. Martins is flushed out of the pocket, throws across the middle, and a good defensive play by Zerwig. The uh, receiver number 16, Aluski, had it momentarily, but it was stripped away by Zerwig. Yeah, see, the, the receivers are not really helping out, helping their quarterback out, Nate Martins. Martins throwing some good passes. He's on the run the, the entire first quarter. Here's the blitz right off the edge. Court. The running back does a great job picking up the blitz. He sees it, recognizes it, rolls to his left, then throws it back to his right. Receiver just needs to pick it up. And wasn't able to do it. And they take another shot down the middle of the field, and this time a little slant route to Bryant Perry. Threw into double coverage, but uh, Perry not able to come up with it and just bang, bang, it's third and 10 for DeSmet. Yeah, they will take some shots down the field with Perry. Perry goes 6'2", 195. He's a senior, he's the speedster on this team, so they will take a couple of shots deep with him. Ball was just slightly overthrown. 328 yards, receiving and four touchdowns for Perry on the season. Martins backed up on a third and 10, throws the rainbow to the left side, has a man, and it is caught. Hanging on to it that time, number 16, Jack Aluski. So a big pickup and a first down for the Spartans. 
looks to his right, comes back to his left, and floats out a beautiful ball to him. Now this is all hands right here, getting that ball, making sure that ball doesn't come out of his hands. And now to the right side as Rogers defended very well by Gilfoy, I believe, got in there. Might have had that number wrong. It might have been Barkham, number 14, got in there. Desmet will have to try to mix in the run because they gotta try to back off this defense of Vianney as they're blitzing these linebackers almost every single play. Look at these linebackers move up on the line of scrimmage. They're coming every single play. Either they've gotta throw the ball deep over their heads or they gotta jump one of these runs right by them. Loss of four by Rogers, second down at 14 for the Spartans. Just underway, second quarter here from Desmet. Martin's back to pass, looking and hit as he throws and it goes incomplete. And it looked like number eight, Kadri Talib got there. The defensive tackle knocked him backwards as the ball was coming out of his hand. Yeah, whenever you have really deep routes down the field, which those were about three different receivers, your offensive line know they got to protect the probably about a, a second or a second and a half longer, and they just wasn't able to do it on that play. Great shot of Talib there. He was the one that got the quarterback pressure. And Nick Martin's the sophomore. Soft paw for, just to say that five times fast. And Martin's is on the snap and penalty flag before it got started. And it might be another one against DeSmet. And whenever you're consistently in second and long, third and long, it allows this defense of Yanni's, this front seven, to just pin their ears back and go right after the quarterback because they know that I, that Desmet's not going to run the football. They got to figure out a way to win on first down to make it so if they get the third down, it's more third and manageable. They're third and long every possession here. This one third and 18 as Martins is going to send Rodgers in motion, fakes the swing pass. He's going to step up in the pocket. And he's gonna get taken down by the defense of the Golden Griffins. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but Tavion Wary, the defensive tackle, among others, gets there. And you see that Martins is limping off the field. He holds the ball here. He, he wants to throw it right over the middle, looks to his right, fakes the screen, and wants to come right over the middle to, to, to the receiver. Didn't like it, pulls it down, tries to get out of the tries to run is not able to looks like something you know on that on that left leg or left ankle or hip Myers a booming punt and the Griffins are going to get away from it it'll roll inside the 10 inside the five and it will be put down at the two so another long field this time for the Golden Griffins as they come back out onto the field. Want to remind you and want to say thank you to uh, Connections to Success. They are breaking the cycle of poverty through hope, resources, and a plan. We also thank them for their local support, or I'm sorry, their support of local families as well as their sponsorship here of the Bomberito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week brought to you by Vatterock College. Now you have a situation here where Viani is backed up, because, but because their quarterback is so dynamic, they may just try to run him out of here. Morell is going to get the handoff, and he will get it out to about the 10-yard line, so a pickup of seven, maybe eight yards on first down for him. Yeah, they're just coming right behind this big offensive line. This this offensive line is a, it just outweighs and is manhandling the defensive line of this Met so far. This is where the game is being won so far, right up front, right in the trenches. Option to the right side. Now Harris is going to keep it, and he will counter back to the left. I'm not sure if he got the first down. Looks like he might have. Got outside the 10-yard line. Give him a gain of about three and another first down for the Golden Griffins. Look at that big offensive line. Thomas Willett goes 6'3", 270. Number 70 right there on the right side. They love to run right behind him. Harris looking right. Throw oh, and it is intercepted. Intercepted a big defensive play that time by the Spartans. Kendall Fields steps in front of the pass and maybe, just maybe, gives his Spartans a shot in the arm. This is the second play that DeSmet needed to make on defense. 
He's going to read it right to left. Once the hits the hit the curl right, curl route right away, the corner jumps right in front and picks it off. And it actually was a very good job by Zach of tackling them because that's an easy six points if he doesn't. Kendall Fields, number 13, comes up with the interception, and the Spartans will have it. First and 10 from the 15-yard line, and now an option to the right side, and running down the right side with the flag flies in. Into the end zone, number six, Eric Ahi, or excuse me, uh, Julian Fowler, but that one's gonna come back. Very good play here. Option to the right, reads the DN, DN comes up, he pitches it. Now he's just making a play in open space. Great move there to get it into the end zone. Flag comes in, see who they're gonna call it on. It's gonna back up to Smith 10 yards from the spot of the infraction. So that one hurts, you had it first and 10 from the 15. Now it's gonna be first and about 23 or so. First and 20 for I'll call it first and 20, we'll go with that. Martins looks left, throws left, and it is through the hands of an intended receiver, almost jumping the route that time, was number eight, Quadri Talib. But again, we have two receivers. This Met has two receivers right next to each other. This offense is not clicking on all cylinders or actually no cylinders right now, because again, Second Two receivers standing right next to each other in the passing route never means, should happen. Means someone ran the wrong route most of the time. Nine minutes remaining in this first half. All Golden Griffins so far, but the Spartans try to get some momentum here after an interception. Martins throws it to the left side, and that's going to be no good. Another incompletion for Martins and Isaac. Unofficially, of course, but uh, I have Nick Martins, the outstanding sophomore quarterback from DeSmet, now three of 13 passing. Yeah, he's struggling tonight. You know, some of those passes was on him, like that one, he had a receiver open, just missed him. It looks like the receivers ran a wrong route at least twice tonight. So this offense just isn't clicking. Third and 20 for the Spartans. And this would be a big momentum shift if Vianni can keep them off the board here having giving up the interception at the 15 yard line. Middle screen set up, it is completed, but it will be a modest gain this time. The Julian Fowler makes the reception, but uh, not really a whole lot there. Gains seven yards. Boy, that is a great play by Lucas there. Number, number 34, the linebacker, the senior linebacker. Watch him rush up the field first. He rushes up the field, then reads the screen, stops and turns around. Now watch the pursuit from behind right here to make the tackle. That is a great athletic play. Did not give up on the play. We're gonna have a field goal attempt. The hold is down, the line drive is no good as he hooked it to the left and Biani keeps the Spartans off the board. They had it first and 10 from the 15 yard line and we're not able to get anything done. We'll step aside for a moment. You are watching the Bomberito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week brought to you by Vatterot College. Welcome back, right in the middle of that play. I think that is Zerwig again, if I'm not mistaken, it is. Zerwig catches one in the left flat and a big, big gain all the way down to about the 18 yard line. We'll see the replay here as the snap came from about the 20 yard line, just a swing pass to the left side and Zerwig does the rest, a 52 yard pickup. Excuse me, 65 yards from Harris to Zerwig. And now a handoff to Morell. 
running to the left side, not a whole lot there. And Mickey Morrell gets his helmet ripped off at the end of the play, so he picks it up and uh, he'll head to the sideline. Once again, this defense of DeSmet is gonna have to find a way to get off the field without giving up any points here. They have their backs against the wall right here. It's, it's second quarter, mid-second quarter. They're already down by two scores. They gotta find a way to come up with a turnover or a stop. Give him a gain, give Morrell a gain. Anyway, a four on the play. Now Harris, hands off and heading up the middle. That is number six, Devin DeVries. His first carry of the night. This offensive line is doing such a great job for Bayani. They're working as a team. They're working as a unit. They're getting all their blocks, and it's making it very easy for these running backs from Viani to get through the hold and get up to the second level. First and goal. First and goal for the Golden Griffins from the seven-yard line. It's going to be Harris on the option to the left side, and he'll pick up about three or four on first down. Gets it down to the three-yard line. Desmet decides to bring the linebacker blitz right up the middle. Great job by Harris actually reading the blitz. Knew the running backer, running back wasn't going to be able to get to the end zone. Pulls it out of his stomach. Goes around the left side. And the corners come up from Desmet to make a very good, very good tackle. Mickey Morrell comes back into the game. He had his helmet ripped off and then went out for a play. He comes back in and he's got his right knee heavily taped. Like two big swaths of tape on that right leg now. We're going to have another timeout taken by DeSmet with 6.07 left to go in the first half, and that gives us an opportunity to send it down to Angela Sharp. I have Kimberly from We Do Laundry with me. Angela, what is that I smell? Oh, gosh, what? The smell of dirty laundry. Of course it is now, and you can fix that, right? That's absolute the truth. Now, how can you fix that? I can fix that by calling 238-8600. You give me a call, I come pick up your laundry. I do it and return it to you. You come to my home? I come to your home or commercial events. Oh, even commercial events. Yes. So I don't even have to leave my house. You will come, get it, bring it back to me. I'll I will clean. Absolutely. I provide the bags coming and going. Just give me a call. I pick up your laundry. That is wonderful. Other than convenience, why else do people join this? Uh, because some people just don't want to do laundry. I mean, it's, it's, it's a headache. I mean, I have four children, and I know I do laundry all week long. So just like some people don't want to mow their lawn, they have a lawnmower in their garage, and they still have lawn service. There's plenty of people with washing machines and dryers that just don't care to do their laundry. That's right. So you can call Kimberly at We Do Laundry. That number one more time, 238-8600. Thank you very much. Back to you, Isaac and Kevin. Thank you, Angela Sharp, as we have a second and goal coming up for the Golden Griffins from about the three-yard line. Harris takes the snap, gives to Morrell, and into the end zone, Mickey Morrell with a touchdown, his first of the night from three yards out. And Viotti looking to blow this game open. They now lead it 21 to nothing. Morrell does a really good job before the contact comes. Watch him put two hands on this football. Breaks it to the right, follows his guard around the edge. Right here, gets two hands on the football, dives over the top. Very sound fundamentals by Viani running back there. This, this offensive line, this game is being won by the offensive line and defensive line of Viani's that they're just pushing, pushing this met around. And the extra point by Larman is right through the upright. 6.03 remaining in the first half. And Viani now leading it 21 to nothing. And you're watching it on the Bomberito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week. Brought to you by Vanderott College. And we'll keep it right here and uh, let you know that our special thanks go out to Fisher's Pro Line Sports. They are outfitting your team from head to toe. And they are a strong supporter of high school sports. We appreciate Fisher's Pro Line Sports as a sponsor here on the Bomberito Automotive Group. Prep Zone High School Game of the Week brought to you by Vatterot College. Now I know Robert Steeples is in his first year here, so it's gonna take a little bit of time for DeSmet to, to really turn this program around and get them back to winning, uh, to being a winning program. But if I look on this sideline, I don't see a lot of energy. There's not a lot of energy on the DeSmet side of the, the field and I know they're down 22 points right now in the second quarter but one of the things you have to do is if, if you're on the sideline you got to start pumping guys up 
you know, your quarterback, your running back, someone has to take control of this team offensively and defensively and get that group together and say, listen, we're not out of this game. Let's continue to fight. Let's just score on the next possession and take it from there. But it's got to come from somebody with a lot of energy. Someone has to be, a, whether it's the captain, the, the, a backup player, it doesn't really matter, but someone has to put some energy and some, to, and some life back into this, this Met team. And then you see uh, Robert Steeples on the sideline there, played here at DeSmet and then uh, went on, played a little at Mizzou as well, and now he's back. Very young head coach. I believe he graduated in 09, so he's, uh, he's what, 24, 25, maybe 26 years old, so a very, very young first-year head coach here at DeSmet. Interestingly enough, the football coach played here. A lot of people know who Blake Ahern is. He played basketball here and then played at Missouri State. He is the head basketball coach here at DeSmet. Big to, big uh, return this time out to about the 37-yard line. Hunter Schoenig almost broke it down the right sideline before the Golden Griffins were able to corral it. And Staples did spend some time in the NFL. He had a couple of years in the NFL with the Dallas Cowboys. So he comes in with a lot of experience. He was able to come in here and 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 bring in his own coaching staff. You know, so and speaking with him before the game, he knows, listen, it's gonna take a little bit of time, a couple of years to really get this program back to where they wanna be. But they are but he said he also says that they are very very competitive and he likes to likes how this team competes but they need to just compete a little bit more tonight martins is going to go back under center on this first down play so a little bit different look offensively for the spartans he will hand it off rogers breaks a tackle and gets a good gain leaps over a man inside Viani territory gets down to the 47 yard line that's a gain of almost 15 yards and i like what he did when he got up he pounded the ball he's trying to get a little bit of energy back into this team back into this crowd this crowd is is very silent right now he's so i like that first play call this offensive line of this man is going to have to really step up and they are back in Viani territory. Rogers again with a carry and is met at the line, but then moves the pile forward a little bit more. Gain of almost four. Final point on uh, on Robert Steeples for now. And we talked about he played with uh, the uh, Dallas Cowboys a little bit. I know it's a baseball term, but even got a cup of coffee with the Rams for a while as well. Played uh, was on the active roster for a couple of games anyway. Big possession here for DeSmet. And this time, Rogers strung out to the right side. Good pursuit by the left side of that Viani defense, and that's going to be a loss of four, maybe five on that play for Rogers. Really good job. When you're outside, contain a, your, a defensive end or a linebacker, and they pitch that ball your way, your job is to make sure you get outside and contain, and Viani did a really good job of that. Third down and nine as Martins goes under center again. We're gonna have a flag, and it looks like this might be encroachment against Viani. Viani so far has played a real clean game. Not many many penalties tonight on Viani, if, if any. Their so first. That's, that's their first. That is their first. Real. versus, uh, by my count, seven against DeSmet so far tonight. And that's just a, a you know, a, a young team in a new system, new coaching staff, trying to, you know, new offense, new defense, trying to find a way. DeSmet will check the play from the sideline. So third down and much more manageable four now versus the nine they were facing a moment ago. Martins looks like he's trying to draw him offside. Now back to pass, sets up. Throws deep down the left side and threw it. Almost out of bounds, but it was defended well by Viani's number 14, Hunter Barkham. Now this is just a, a this is a miss by Nate Martins. And normally he puts these deep balls right on the money. Good job by the receiver going right past the corner. This ball needs to be thrown right up the field, but he leads them out of bounds. This is a touchdown if Martin's able to throw that ball on the money. Throwing the deep ball is one of the things he does really well, even as a young quarterback. That one just got away from him. Aluski, the intended receiver, looks like they may go for it here on fourth down, and they do with the jumbo package, and they're going to be stopped for a one-yard gain, and the Viani Golden Griffins are going to take over on downs at about the 39-yard line. I don't mind the call to go for it on fourth down, 
but I'm a little bit surprised at the play call there just to go right up the middle knowing that the strength of Vianney's defense is that defensive line. So they try to go right at that defensive line. I, I think that's a mistake. You, you got to try to go around that defensive line because they're so big. You saw Cameron Rogers making his way off the field. Didn't uh, look like he was feeling all that well. Now Harris to the right side and Cam Coleman wants the flag and gets the flag against DeSmet. Looks like it might be a pass interference penalty or defensive holding against the Spartans. Yeah, it looked like Brian Perry, the senior defensive back, reached out and grabbed him with the right hand. They're doing a little bit of join as well. Cam Coleman is letting them know, listen, I got you for, I got you deep once. I'm going to do it again. And uh, so it looks like he reached out and grabbed him. Yes, he did. They will call it defensive holding, so it will be an automatic first down against the Spart or, uh, for the Golden Griffins. Well, DeSmith is in a tough situation right now defensively. You want to try to slow down his offense, so you say, okay, bring the blitz to try to slow these guys down. The problem is, Tiana Harris is such a great athlete, he can run around that blitz, and he throws the ball well downfield. Penalty number eight of the first half against the Spartans. Harris back to pass. Now he's going to tuck and run. Picks up about five and eventually about an eight-yard gain for Tion Harris, maybe even Tion a little Harris bit more. Watch the offensive lineman here, number 54, Jack Lyon, 6'1", senior. Watch him power drive. He's right there. Look at that drive blocking. That is one of the things that this offensive line has been doing well all night. And that's getting in, getting in of the, in, into the shirts, into the pads of this mess defensive line and really driving them off the ball. Keenan Agnew got the stop. This time it's going to be Coleman on the end of round trying to get the corner and kind of disappears into the crowd and picks up about a four-yard pickup on first down. Mickey Morrell is doing a lot of things for this offense tonight as well as he goes around the left end and picks up a really good block. To, to help that running, to help the running back pick up those four yards. The, the playbook is wide open for Viani as everything they're doing seems to be working right now. Harris on a first and 10 from inside the 40 yard line. As they look to the sideline, 310 remaining as you can see there in the first half and so far it's been all Viani 22 to nothing. They're driving again here late in the first half. Harris with the run and just follows some lead blocking for a pickup of eight. This is a great job by the left tackle, James Keeser, 6'4", six, six, 255 pounds. Watch him pull from left to right and Harris gets right behind him. Pulling from left to right, boom, look at that block there. Here's another down block. Great job waiting and being patient with, that, with those blocks and then gets up the field for a few yards. Harris on a second and call it a short, or excuse me, long two, short three as the clock winds. And Harris inside handoff, Morrell, he's got the first down right at the sticks, it looks like. Depends on the spot, he's at the 26 yard line and a gain of three and they will indicate another first down for the Golden Griffins. There's plenty of time here. You're a little bit over two minutes. You don't really need to rush. If you score, you want to make sure that you're scoring the touchdown and not giving Dismet back the ball. So I expect them to take a little bit of time, not be in such of a hurry. Run that clock down just a little bit. You're in good position if you're Viani. And now Harris on a first and 10. Looks left, throws left, picked off, and that's a pick six. It's a foot race. Coleman trying to run him down, but he's not going to. And the Spartans are on the board. Great defensive play that time by Jack Aluski. Jumped the route, read the eyes of the quarterback, and takes it the distance for a touchdown. Yeah, I'm just shocked of the play call. Really shocked. The running game is going very well. You're up by a three scores. You can run the ball here. They elect to pass it. It's a receiver screen, and the corner just jumped it and gets right in front, picks it off, and it's going to be a pick six. So I'm, it's one of the things that Dismet needed to get back in this game. So at halftime, it allowed them to have a, a much better feeling. But they do have to come back, kick this ball off, and try to 
stop Vianney from scoring again. About a 73-yard return that time by Jack Aluski to get the Spartans on the board. The extra point from Myers. They get the hold down, and the kick is up, and it's good. Spartans are on the board. It's 22-7 with 1.53 remaining in the first half, and uh, that gives us an opportunity to send it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Angela Sharp. I've got Matt Beeren from the Elite Football Academy. All right, now I hear uh, the Smets coach, you know him. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, a neat night for us. Uh, uh, Robert, Coach Robert Steeples is a uh, young man that we trained in high school, then uh, collegiately when he was at the University of Missouri, and then he uh, transferred to Memphis, we trained him, and then helped him with the process of uh, going to the NFL. So uh, he was with the, the Vikings and Cowboys. So uh, uh, got to see a lot of him over the years and grow from a, a player to a professional and now to a uh, high school head coach. So it's really neat to see to get here. It's the first game I've got to get out and see him uh, uh, play this year. He's actually coached uh, uh, many moons ago for us, our little kids flag football. So he's been been kind of, uh, I think, tuning himself up for this moment. So that's kind of really cool for you to see somebody from a young age all the way through the system and now coaching. Yeah, you know, I, I think we pride ourselves uh, in, in developing not only just the players on the field, but we have I think we had five guys last year that uh, uh, are now coaching Division One football. So the guys that we've coached, the coaches in our program, have been hired on at other staffs. So uh, another one of them is a guy, Malcolm Agnew, that whose little brother's playing tonight. Uh, he's now at uh, the University of Nebraska as, as a recruiting coordinator, uh, doing an excellent job. Last year this time he was coaching, uh, you know, our running backs uh, for us at, at the academy. So pretty neat to see guys develop not only just our players but guys that we coach when they were younger come back they, they start to get a pedigree in coaching and then and then they uh, take that to the next level that is amazing now every time we're here we talk about how you can start them really young what if somebody missed that opportunity they didn't, didn't get their kid in when they were young yep. and now they're really interested in football but they're a little older you know I think uh, the, the neat thing is is that we provide opportunities for athletes that are playing that say hey I need a little bit more of an edge so we can help them on the physical side to get faster and stronger. We also can help them uh, develop skill sets if they change a position and they want to get a, get, get a head start on, on the competition. So learning from guys that all we do is specialize on skill development on our football side, and that helps us really fine tune what these guys need and give them an understanding of how they can take their game to the next level. Awesome, now how does somebody even find you? The easiest way is uh, log on to elitefootball.net. The first session's a free trial. Uh, it's as simple as that. You come on in. We do a trial class of our speed and agility and the football skills, so it really gives you an idea of the complete program. Perfect. Thank you very much. Back to you, Kevin and Isaac. Thank you, Angela Sharp, as uh, the Viani Golden Griffins get a 15-yard completion from Harris to Morrell on first down. A little bit of a, uh, a time concern here with a minute 35 left to go in the first half, and the Griffins a long field in front of them. I see Harris rolls to his right and has a man that's Morell again. Almost an identical play to last time. Just a little bit shorter as far as yardage is concerned. They'll give him a gain of 12. Yeah, Desmet has been playing a very soft defense, trying to keep everything in front of him. With only a, a minute 30 left, they don't want to give up the long ball right behind their heads. But Vianney Tian's hair is doing a really good job of taking what they're, what they're given. And it's another first down for the Golden Griffins, and Harris is going to try to run, and for the first time tonight, I believe they tackled him for no gain, maybe even a loss of a yard. Looks like they're going to take time out here to talk it over. It's exactly what they want to do with only a minute, three seconds left. Viani calls their uh, first time out of the uh, of the first half, and it's a good time to tell you that support for this broadcast is provided by Noodles & Company, real cooking, real food, real flavors. Find them online at noodles.com. <laughs> and that food that they have at Noodles, I'll tell you what, next week, we're getting here early next week because I want me a plate of that food. I saw some macaroni and cheese. It looked great. I'm going to make sure I'm here an hour and a half, two hours early to get me some of that food from Noodles. Griffins come back out onto the field after the uh, timeout here. It's really turned into a great night for football. Cooled off just a little bit. Feels like the humidity is down just a little bit from where it was earlier. 
22 to seven our score as the Griffins swing pass to the left side that one falls incomplete and it will be a third down play coming up. Look, I'm a little surprised that they haven't taken more shots deep. They've been successful with Cam Coleman running down the sideline, especially when this Mets playing man and man. I know this Mets in a little bit of a soft coverage here, but I expect them to try to get one of these passes down, down the field to Coleman. Deion Harris. Once the middle screen now just has to throw it into the ground and Morrell got hit again after the pass was incomplete. That's two plays in a row that he took a big hit. And it will bring up fourth down for the Golden Griffins. Just 58 seconds to go in the first half. And I guess a little bit of a debate about whether you send the punting unit out and it looks like the punting unit will come onto the field for the Griffins. Yeah, there should be no debate at all. The last thing you want to do after giving up a, a pick six to get Desmet back in his game is to go for it here, not get it, and give Desmet the ball right around the 50-yard line with a minute left. So, yeah, you definitely punt this ball deep, send your defense out there, and try to get in at halftime up 22-7. Looks like they are in a jumbo formation, but they likely will just rugby style kick this. Schuler is the deep man in the formation and he will just pooch it down the field, bounces at the 25, rolls inside the 20, and will roll dead at about the 20 yard line. So a long field in front of the Spartans, just 47 seconds to work with here in the first half. Yes, I, I, the question is, would they go ahead and put Nate Martins out here and try to throw the ball deep, take a couple of shots to try to get in position to get to the end zone? You have 46 seconds left. You're down 22 to 7 right before the half. I say take a couple of shots deep, even if they're incomplete and you have to go to fourth down. It goes to fourth down. A punt should get you back over the 50-yard line. With, with just seconds left. So I, I'm expecting them to take a couple of shots here. Well, you definitely have the uh, quarterback with the arm to do it, to stretch that vertical game. We'll have to see. Back to pass, steps up in the pocket under pressure. Now he's gonna throw and it is caught out at the 33 yard line to Aluski. That doesn't hurt you if you're Viana. You wanna try to keep everything in front of you. Even if it goes 10 yards, keep it in front and then make the tackle immediately if the receiver makes the catch and that's exactly what they did. Martin's under center as the clock runs and he will clock the football. So brings up second down, stops the clock with 35 seconds. That's, that's interesting. I, I would think that they would have two play calls there, so if they had a completion, they run to a line of scrimmage and know exactly what the second play call was. They, they, they did not. They spiked the ball, now it's second down. Martin's in shotgun. Looks, throws, looking for Aluski and overthrew. Yeah, Viani's doing a really good job of staying back, not letting the speed receivers of DeSmet get behind them especially with only 31 seconds left. So if the Smets gonna get down this field, it may be something over in the middle of the field where they may have to take a timeout. They do have one timeout left. It is third down. And I believe Vianney is going to take a timeout. They have two, so they're gonna use one here. And then if DeSmet does not get a first down on this play, they'll call another timeout. And they will get the ball back here late in the first half. And Isaac, this is where uh, what you were just talking about a moment ago when they clock the ball on first down. It's almost like giving Viani an extra timeout. Yeah, that surprised me because you're coming out of the break. You're coming out of basically a change of possession. So normally you would have two play calls and let the offense know, listen, on the first play, this is what we're going to run. If it's completed, let's run to the line of scrimmage and then we're going to run this play. So it's usually two play calls. The problem when you don't do that is exactly what we just saw. Completion, it's deep down the field, 10, 15 yards for the first down. Now the quarterback doesn't have the next play. So what do you do? Well, you have to spike the ball and it gives the defense time to also set up, 
get a little bit of a rest, maybe change some players out. So I just thought that was a lost opportunity by DeSmet. And you wonder, you know, obviously we don't know, but you wonder if part of that is having a, a somewhat inexperienced sophomore quarterback as well. You know, maybe he doesn't quite grasp the offense enough to, to call two plays, and if this, then this. I, I Yeah, it's just a guess on my part. And now we're going to have a procedure penalty against the wide receiver to the high side of your screen there. Forgot about the snap count, and that's going to cost him five yards to bring up a third and 15. They're going in the wrong direction here with only 31 seconds remaining. You will like to see, as, as, as Vianney is going to play a real soft defense, you see two safeties back deep, although the linebackers are kind of close, safeties, two safeties deep in the middle of the field. They're going to come after him, and Mertens hit as he throws, and Aluski cannot run under it. And it falls incomplete, stops the clock with 26 seconds left in the first half, and the Golden Griffins are going to get the ball back. Five of 18 is Martins on the night. Yeah, he'll like to forget this first half. As you see him right here, is very frustrated, has his head down, but he has to understand, even though he's a sophomore, he's the leader of this team as the quarterback, and he has to stay confident because this team goes as he goes, and the emotions that he shows on the sideline will really get into the rest of the players. So he's got to be able to pump these guys up, even on the sideline, let them know, listen, stay up. We're going to get back in this game. Myers with a booming punt, wow. angling away from Coleman. Coleman catches it over his shoulder. That's an And awesome. is tackled <laughs> right at the 30-yard line. Does exactly what Isaac Bird said you never do, but he just did it. I can't believe he attempted this catch. There is no reason to attempt this catch. Zero. If he drops this ball and this Met picks it up, they've got first and 10 at the 40. This ball is over his head, over his right shoulder, comes back and catches it. He probably couldn't do that two times in a row if he had to. That is a tremendous catch, but I guarantee you that, that the head coach right now is telling him, listen, there's no reason. Paul Day is telling him there's no reason to attempt that catch. Don't do that again. That's outstanding hands. And, uh, you know, folks, that's coming from an NFL player that once did that. So, uh, you know, when he says don't catch it over your shoulder, you don't catch it over your shoulder. Not in right? that option. <laughs> not, not doing this time with a half a, a half a minute left. No way. And the rush up the middle, and the clock will stop momentarily while they move the chains. And. That should do it as soon as they wind the clock. That should bring an end to the first half. All right. And there's a long pause here as they, I, I guess, don't know where they want to mark the ball. Both teams just kind of look into the sideline like, can we walk off the field yet? Because they're not going to snap the ball with 3.3 seconds left. Well, these are this is just the referees want a little bit of air time. This is their time. They well, want to make sure it. that their family is watching, and they want to make sure that their face is on TV. And, you know, they're talking about it right now. Are you coming over tonight to get something to eat after the game? Yeah, I'll come over. I have the wife come over. The kid's coming over, too. Okay, you want two plates or one? And I'll probably take two plates. It's going to be a long game. So... <laughs> Now they're going to go ahead and spot this ball here and hopefully get this snap off. Well, or at I, least guess, at the I guess what out. they decided was it wasn't a first down, so it's second down, so they'll wind the clock and let's just go to the second locker room. After all of that. So there you go, halftime horn sounds, and at the half it is Viani 22 and the DeSmet Spartans 7 as you see both teams making their way off the field and everyone making their way probably to the concession stand for some uh, refreshments here at the break. In just a moment, we'll send it down to the field as I believe Angela Sharp is lining up the head coach and uh, we'll hear from Robert Steeples before we take the break here. It's been a tough first half for his team. Angela Sharp is ready, as is Robert Steeples. We send it down to them on the sideline. All right, Coach, now we talked to you before the game. You were very complimentary of Vianney. You finally got on the board. What are you going to hope to change for the second half? we got to play a lot better. Um, they're not slowing down. They're going to keep going. They're going to try to uh, get as many points as possible. So for us, our guys just got to come out, tackle, 
and uh, do the things that they were taught. All I asked them is just to be the best version of themselves, and that's all I need is those men to be those men that I know they can be. And do you think they've been them, those men this first half? Um, in my honest opinion, no. I think they're capable of a lot more. They know that. But also I know Vianney's capable of a lot more, too. I'm sure they'll make some adjustments, and it'll be a fun second half. Well, we can't wait to see it. Good luck to you, Coach. Right, thank, thank you. you. We'll back to you, Kevin and Isaac. Isaac, pretty uh, impressive first half for the Vianney Golden Griffins. Yes, it was. Everything they did offensively worked. Just one big mistake that got that the, the pick six got dismet back into this game, but everything they're working offensively and defensively is working. You see the score there, Vianney 22, dismet 7 at the half. And this is the Bomberito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week brought to you by Vatterock College. Seem like the wireless world today could use a smile? At Cricket Wireless, we think so. Two year contract. That's why, with us, you don't have to worry about annual contracts. Prices for our plans are all in, taxes and fees included. And we've got more 4G LTE coverage nationwide than T-Mobile or Sprint. That's a whole lot of network for not a lot of depth. It's what makes Cricket the happiest place in the whole wireless world. Cricket Wireless, something to smile about. Consistency, accuracy, that's dead on sports.
Welcome back to DeSmet High School. You see the score there, halftime. The Biani Golden Griffins leading the DeSmet Spartans by a score of 22 to seven with Isaac Bird. I'm Kevin Paulus. Angela Sharp, our sideline reporter, will be uh, catching up with the head coach of the Viani Golden Griffins momentarily, Paul Day the third. We used to like to call him PD3. He's gonna be making his way out of the locker room in a minute. It's been a great first half for the Golden Griffins, 22 to seven. The only points that the Spartans were able to put on the board came by came by way of a defensive touchdown. Yeah, on a, on a play that I was surprised that they called. They were very under con, in control of the game, up 22 to nothing at that point. Decides to throw the ball. I thought they were running and be conservative and maybe stick it in the end zone to go up 30 to nothing. They throw it, gets picked off and return. And that's exactly what DeSmet needed. If DeSmet was going into this halftime right now down 22 to nothing, that team, this young team may fold. But because it's 22-7, this game isn't over. If they come down, they come in and score on their first possession and make this 22 to 14, we'll have a game late. Yeah, Vianney did defer to start the game, so they will uh, get the get the ball to start the second half. So that's uh, another break for them as uh, we get set here for the second half. Pretty impressive, uh, you know, display so far. We talked about our, our players of the game as we were coming into this and. Tion Harris, and uh, we're going to see him as we take a look at some of the halftime uh, or first half highlights. You see here Harris optioning to the left side. He's going to keep it. This is the first score of the game from about nine yards out. Look how big and strong he is down low. He's a he's a truck now, only 5'8", but he is tough to bring down. This it, time rolling to the right side. This is the second touchdown, buying time with his feet until he finds Zerwig all alone in the corner of the end zone. One of the things he does well, buy-in time with his feet, allows his receiver to uncover, and then throws a great pass. And the third one, Mickey Morrell, just right up the gut right there, gets into the end zone from just uh, three yards out. 
And it was a 22 to nothing game. And now we got the score the, going the other way. Great jump of a route there by the defender. That's Eluski. And he takes it to the house, 73 yards out. And that's how the Spartans got on the board, still trailing 22 to seven. That's how the Spartans was able to get a little bit of life. I'm interested to see how they come out here in the third quarter. They need to take the ball, stuff it in the end zone to really put some pressure on Vianney. Vianney hasn't played under pressure all night in his first half. If DeSmet is able to, to make this score 22 to seven, then that may put a little bit of pressure on, on, on Vianney. As we take a look at the first half stats there, you see the rushing yards heavily in favor of Vianney, 170 to 38. Passing yards also on the side of the Golden Griffins, 180 to 73 total offense. Look at that number, 350 in the first half, Isaac. One of the things that you normally never see, three turnovers by Vianney and they're winning. Yeah. It's usually the other way around. If I would have told you before the game at halftime, Vianney will have three turnovers you and a score will be 22 to seven, you would say Dismet is up. Right. That is not the case. That Vianney has done a really good job when they turn the ball over defensively stopping them getting the ball back. Yeah, two of those uh, uh, turnovers were interceptions by Harris, who as well as he's done in the first half, two interceptions, one return for a touchdown, and then the other one, it looked like Viani was gonna go in for a score. The snap goes over the head of Morrell, and uh, Desmet covers it up at the 35 yard line, so kind of uh, turning away a scoring chance. So three sort of big turnovers for Viani, and yet they are in control in this game, 22 to seven. Yeah, if you're the defense of, of Desmet, you have to find a way to get more turnovers, so maybe two more this second half, but then the offense has to find a way to get the ball in the end zone. The big mismatch tonight has been the offensive line of Viani and the defensive line of, of Desmet. The offensive line of Viani has pushed around most of the plays, most of that first half, this match defensive line, and that's where this game is being won. And we also saw the bottom line on that on that stat there, nine penalties for DeSmet. They had a lot of them early, just one for Vianney. So Vianney playing a little bit more disciplined in the first half perhaps than DeSmet. And this is going to be kind of a, uh, a strange thing that I'm going to say here. Uh, Nate Martins uh, unofficially 5 of 18 in the first half, 5 of 18. But he looked better late in the first half in that, yes, the receivers are getting open. He's just not quite making connection most of the time overthrowing them. So they are getting open. He's just not quite making the connection. Well, there's going to have to be a sense of urgency now with this match. So I think you probably not scrap the running game completely, but you've got to get Nate Martins going. You're not going to win this game from behind if you dismet running the football. That's not going to happen because Vianney's defensive line, that front seven is so big and active that they're shutting down that running game. Nate Martins is, is the leader of this offense. He's the leader of this team, even though he's a sophomore. He's got to get going. So he's got to tell these receivers, get open, catch the ball. When you catch the ball, make something happen. He has to talk to his offensive line, letting them know, I need another second to throw the ball. Just one more second, I get the ball out. As we mentioned, Vianney will get the ball to begin the second half. And it just, you know, here's the thing, Isaac, it feels like this game is a lot more lopsided than it is on the scoreboard. I mean, they're, they're down two scores in this game when they were doubled up on uh, total offense, gave up 350 yards of offense in the first half, and yet you're still in this football game. Yeah, if you just looked at the yardage and took the score down, you would probably say Vianney's up 30 to nothing. The issue came when Vianney turns it over three times and throws a pick six. You know, so it was it was basically self-inflicted and, and self-inflicted wounds by Viani. If they don't do this second half, I'm interested to see what what changes this met is it has in store offensively and defensively to try to slow them down and pick it up with their offense. Matthew Meyer with the run up, and we're underway here in the second half. This one is going to be returned by Devin Ward. He'll go right up the gut and get out to about the 30-yard line, maybe about the 32, and that's where Viotti will have it offensively here in the second half. With Viani's offensive line being so big and active, you would think that Desmet will come up and try to pressure 
Viani here. Bring their safeties down just a little bit and their linebackers play them on the line to stop this run. The problem is, Tion Harris is so dynamic. If you miss him in the backfield, he'll go for 40 yards down the field just running the ball. Or if he throws it deep, he has a couple of good receivers as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how Desmet plays them defensively. Harris on first down, hands off to Morrell. Big hole up the middle and a pickup of eight yards on first down. That's exactly the way I thought they would come out with this offensive line. They went into the, in the half and said, listen, we're dominating up front. Let's see if we can push them around here with this first drive and really, really take their heart out of them. You do that by pushing them around with the running game. And it makes sense, too, because, you know, you've thrown two interceptions tonight. Harris has played a great game, but he's thrown two interceptions. Don't put that ball in the air unless you really have to. Morrell, another run, this time kind of off right tackle, and he will pick up three, another first down for the Golden Griffins. Great job blocking right there by the right guard, Jake Lyons. Watch the right guard number 54, Jake Lyons. As he takes his man and turns him inside out right here, opens up the hole right there. Now the hole opens up and the running back gets right through. So good job by Jake Lyons, number 54. Harris and a run this time by Tion Harris and he'll go forward for about three. A little bit of a late push there by DeSmet and uh, Biani Zerwig actually will get up and he's a little jacked up right now because he thinks he got a little bit of a late hit fired up after that play. Yeah, it's very visible that this offensive line is going to be asked to dominate this second half like they did this first, like they did in the first half. Going to grind it out with that big offensive line. Morrell up the middle and this time picks up about three. So now you get them into third down exactly where you want to be if you're Viani or if, if you're Dismet. So now they're bringing number 65, Marquis Simmons, 6'2", 275. Let's try to plug up the middle and make, make Viani at least try to run around them instead of run right at them. So it'll be third down and about two for the Golden Griffins adjusting the formation here. Came out of the locker room with four consecutive running plays. Make it five. Morrell is gonna try to get the corner, turn it upfield just short, I believe, of the first down. Gonna be about a half yard short, and it will bring up a fourth down. Exactly what I thought would happen. They try to go around this this Desmet defense instead of trying to go at them as, as Desmet brings in a couple of big bodies and a good job Stopping them on third down. Big foot down here early in third quarter. And they're going to go for it here as Mickey Morrell lined up in the Wildcat formation. Jumbo in front of him. Takes the snap, goes forward, and has the first down. It's so hard to stop Jumbo when they bring in a couple of big tight ends and then a running back and then a big offensive line. So he has all these blockers in front of him, and he's like, just pick out a hole. First hole he sees, he dips through it, gets low, gets as many yards as he can. He knows he's got the first down, wraps up the ball. And this is this is very ideal football that Viani's playing right now. Running the clock, taking the air out the ball. Harris back to pass, looking for Coleman, and he's open, and he dropped it. Right through his hands at the 10-yard line. He's slow getting up, but I think it's uh, more of a mental pain than anything else as he does get to his feet as that had six written all over it. Shocking that he dropped that ball. Coleman normally is very sure-handed. Run, run, run. Here's the fake. The safeties are up. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Beautiful thrown ball. And it hits him right in the hands, and he's not able to pull it in. Isaac, if that was a punt, he would have caught it. Hey, yeah, right yes. over the shoulder, right? <laughs> Here comes Harris to the right side, and now he's going to reverse back to the left, goes forward. Pickup of 11 yards, that's an electrifying run right there. All of the effort zigzagging through the defense, 11 yard pickup for Harris. He's the ultimate freelancer. He loves to just freelance with the ball. So when he runs right, you can't over pursue because he does an excellent job of cutting back and getting extra yards. You gotta really be gap sound to take Harris down. First and 10 from the 34, now it's Morrell again. Modest gain this time, picks up three, maybe four on first down. Yeah, when you're consistently pounding and pounding and pounding on the defense, 
what it does is wears you down. It wears your front seven down, especially when you're already outmanned and outweighed as this Dismet defensive line is. You know, this the, what Viani's doing is setting up the fourth quarter of, of, of just pure domination. Grinding it out on him, and this time it'll be Morrell running off left tackle. This time only a gain of two or three. It'll bring up third down and three. Morrell has already matched his uh, his number of carries from the first half, and we're only you know five minutes into the second half. That's already carry number seven for him. Actually, he had eight, I guess, in the first half. Harris toss sweep. Right side, Morrell blocking in front. First down to the 20, 15, 10, tiptoes, knocked out of bounds at about the five. Now I want you to watch the receiver, Cam Coleman. He just dropped a touchdown pass earlier. So instead of coming back here, putting his head down, watch the receiver out to the right, number one. Instead of putting his head down, watch him get a block here that's right here gets the block, just gets in front of the defender. So that instead of the defender having a clear path to the runner, he does it and that springs the runner right down the sideline. And now Harris will option to the left side. He's gonna keep it turned, dive for the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Tion Harris from five yards out. And Viani extends the lead 28 to seven. This is an excellent drive going down the field with the power gain. They went into halftime, Viani and their coaching staff, saying, listen, the biggest advantage we have is our offensive line. Let's just pound them and pound them and pound them, go right at them, and see if we can take the wheel out of this met. And that first drive was all about that. James Schuler with a hold, Larman with the kick. It's good, 7.30 left to go in the third quarter and Viani now leads it 29 to seven. And it's a great opportunity for us to send it down to Angela Sharp. Napoleon with connections to success. And I just realized every week you're wearing the color of the team you think is gonna win. Score is not helping you today. I'm not doing so well. <laughs> I do believe I projected one correctly and that was CBC over Chaminade. Well, that's uh, but good. This week I'm not doing so hot. Not so hot. What is Connections to Success? So we're a multifaceted nonprofit agency serving the greater St. Louis area for about 20 years. Uh, we provide job readiness, placement, retention, mentoring, social entrepreneurship, and community advocacy. So we're truly realizing economic independence for all. And how can someone hook up with you and you help them? View uh, our website at connectionstosuccess.org. Shoot me an email at n, as in Napoleon, Williams at connectionstosuccess.org, or call one of our offices, 314-584-6702, or 636-940-8027. And are you guys also looking for like volunteers to help? We most certainly are. I'm so glad you asked me that, Angela. I'm a little down because my prediction is wrong, but <laughs> yes, volunteers, we need them very badly. So volunteers really allow us to expand our reach, uh, increase our effectiveness of our service provision. We depend a great deal on our uh, volunteers, and we have close to 500 volunteers through our four sites serving two states and four cities. Uh, and so it, it allows us to do much more work and serve many more people. So yes, volunteers, interns is another good one that helps us out. So those service learners and practicum students, Shoot me an email. I, I want to explore an opportunity to get you involved with Connections to Success. Napoleon wants to talk to you if you need help or if you can help them. Being an intern, volunteer, check out Connections to Success. Back to you, Kevin and Isaac. Thank you, Angela. The kickoff, a little bit of a pooch kick that time by the Griffins. They didn't want to kick it deep and give the opportunity for a long return. It was covered up by the Spartans, and they'll have it from their own 33-yard line. Martins needing to make something happen, throws down the field and through the hands of the intended receiver, a little bit high. That was Grant Stegman trying to go up high for it. Yeah, this, this passing game just a tad bit off as he has, again, he has a receiver open for a touchdown. Nate Martin steps into a throw, and instead of putting a little bit of touch on the ball, which he normally does beautifully, he tries to drive it in there a little bit, and as he just overthrows it. This offense just a little bit off all first half, and they start this second half the same way. Maybe tried to do a little bit too much with that.
football. Martins, this time the handoff to Rogers. Nothing doing there. The Golden Griffins there to swarm him under nicely and a loss on the play. I think number nine, that was Jordan Gilfoy got in there to make the stop for a three yard loss. Yeah, I think, I, I, I believe that th this man is gonna probably have to just not run the ball the rest of the way and just try to throw their way back in this, into this game because the running game hasn't worked all night and a throwing game at least gives them hope. Speaking of throwing, and another incomplete pass that time by Martins as the uh, safeties did a good job of kind of sliding to the right side on the uh, on the defensive end, and Aluski can't come up with it. So two incompletions and a three-yard loss on DeSmet's first series of the second half. Now what happens is you've got to put your defense back on the field three minutes after they just gave up a long drive down the field where Vianney's offensive line pounded them. You know, now it, you know, now conditioning comes into play as, as this big defensive line or offensive line is gonna have their way. Zurig and Coleman back to receive and ball bounced out of bounds. They're gonna say at the 38 yard line. And that's where Vianney will have it for their second offensive possession of the second half. Good time to remind you that this uh, telecast is made possible through the support of Me To You Game Truck. Let our luxury video game truck be a part of your next party. We appreciate their sponsorship here on the Bob Marito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week. Now DeSmet is in a situation where, listen, their offense, their defense just got off the field. The offense comes on the field, goes three and out, don't, probably takes up a minute and a half. The defense is already, defensive line is already tired and you know what Vianney's about right now. They're gonna come out, look at this big offensive line of, of Vianney, 70, 73, 58. These guys are, are, are very wide, wide based, and they're very well taught. When those guards and those tackles pull, they get up through the line, searching out the linebackers and do a good job of sticking with those linebackers. Then you have their running backs doing a good job of being patient, letting those, those big fellas get out in front for the blocking. So Dismet is tired. They're overmatched on the, on the line. They're gonna have to try to create some kind of energy, some kind of flow in a turnover. And Harris is gonna option to the left side. Now he will tuck it and try to get what he can. Looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe gained a yard on first down. And just for effect, I'm gonna correct one thing that you said, Isaac, what, uh, what you just talked about, we're getting the defense back on the field. That possession lasted 47 seconds. Wow. 47 seconds, the offense was on the field and the defense is back out there. So uh, Vianney scored with 7.30 left to go in the quarter and they were back out there with 6.43 left. Second down coming up, they gave uh, Harris a gain of only one on first down. So it's second and nine, this is Morrell. Time the Spartan defense gets in there, maybe got him for no gain. So uh, starting to bristle a little bit defensively are the Spartans. That was a good job by, by the defense alignment, Keenan Agnew. He didn't make the tackle, but he made the play. The senior 6'1", 290, got up the field and it forced the, the, the running back to hesitate and then not be able to have that timing to get through the hole to allow his partner to come in and make the tackle. So Harris now on a third down and a long eight, back to pass, looking in the flat, now steps up in the pocket, now he's dangerous. He's at the 40, 45 across midfield, first down, delivers a blow and runs out of bounds at the 46 yard line, gain of about 14. Does he look like a, a, a quarterback that was trying to go out of bounds there? No, he was hunting up a defender to try to run him over. This is really a design run. Look at him. He pulls the ball down. Right now, he knows he's going to run. He looked to the left. He had it already in his mind that he was going to run this football and then deliver another blow to the defender. Toss sweep. Now a pass from Barkham down the field. Wide open is Zerwig at the 10. The 5 tackled at the 3. Hunter Barkham took the end around. Pulled up, threw it down the field, and Zach Zerwig was wide open 
as we'll see it on the replay. One of the plays that I said that might happen tonight, you know, reverse, reverse pass, onside kicks. Beautiful throw here as the receiver is wide open. Very well executed play. And it was a great time to, to, to make that call. Backwards pass, good job throwing the ball down the field. And it looks like uh, there was a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct roughing the passer against personal foul, roughing the passer against DeSmet. And do they tack that on to the end? Or yes, do they, they do. That'll bring him, that'll, that'll move him down even a little bit closer. To about the one and a half yard line. Yeah, that personal foul was after the play, so they'll just tap, tack that movement. Not a lot of movement there, maybe a couple of yards. First down and goal to go for Vienna. First and goal. And that jumbo package in the game again. Morrell as the tailback. And the snap, Morrell straight ahead. And another touchdown for Mickey Morrell. And the Spartans pouring it on here in the second half. They lead it 35 to nothing. Morrell has a really good knack as a running back. Watch how he gets really low and is patient with these blocks. He's patient patient gets through now watch how low he gets there to get in and he's not tall he's not that tall so he, he he's able to use his height as an advantage by getting low behind those big offensive linemen and then getting in the end zone Larman to tack on the extra point out of the hold of Schuler. Viani threatening to really blow this game open here in the second half the extra point is up and it's good. It is 36 to 7. Viani on top of the DeSmet Spartans. Absolute domination here so far in the second half. Just uh, what, seven minutes played, and Viani has tacked on another 14 points. Yes, and Viani has had the ball this entire third quarter. I, I thought that that pick six that DeSmet got right before half would put a little bit of life into this offense. But what needs to happen is the defense needs to step up. Viani comes out, drives the ball the length of the field, mostly running plays, puts it in the end zone. They, put, they kick it off, just make it the ball, three and out, they use 30 something seconds. Viani gets the ball, goes down the field, touchdown. So any kind of energy and emotion and excitement that DeSmet had, Viani just put there, just sucked it right out of them by just being bigger, stronger, tougher, and a little bit more, a little bit more advanced when it comes to their team as the, that, as this Met is, a, is, is really a younger team. Paul Day in his fourth year at Viani, Robert Stiefels his first year at DeSmet, so possibly, uh, you know, Viani a little bit further along in their development right now is uh, continuity from year to year really helps them out. Larman is going to just pooch it down the sideline. It'll be covered up at about the 32 yard line. And they're, they're just being smart about it. You know, why kick it deep and give them an opportunity for a return and a great touch on the ball, by the way, by Larman didn't kick it out of bounds, kicked it within about a yard or two of the sideline and right over the top of that front line of return men for DeSmet. Not only that, but it also gives you an opportunity to go down there and get that ball. Mm -hmm. And Viani doesn't fear anything DeSmet is doing. So they don't mind giving DeSmet the ball at the 30-yard line. Look, we're pooch kicking. We don't get it. They get it at the 30. That's okay. Our defense is, is dominated tonight anyway. 31-yard line is the line of scrimmage. And now it's going to be reversed. Coming around the near side is Bryant Perry with blocking. Streaking down the sideline. Still going. Breaks another tackle. He's at the 30. Cuts across the field. He could go. And he's tackled at the 15-yard line. Big pickup of 55 yards, I think, by Bryant Perry. I tell you what, this is a great play, but Jack Sullivan, number 15, saves the touchdown. Here's the reverse blockers out in front. Jack Sullivan is 15 yards down, up, up the field, and watch him run him down from behind. This is a great, right here, that is unbelievable. He was literally 
20 yards behind him, did not give up, and came down and made a touchdown saving play. That's a, that's a defensive end that just did that as well. Jack Sullivan, he's not one of those cornerback safety guys. He's a defensive end that ran down the field and made that play. Great that. effort, great effort, and it, and and it's one of those plays that could result in not giving up a touchdown. If he doesn't make that play, it's a touchdown. It's six points. He's going to run that ball all the way to the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. Now they get down this far on a trick play, a reverse. Nothing has worked for them offensively, them being dismet. So if you're Viani, you're still very confident right now that you can keep him out of the end zone. They're on the 15-yard line. DeSmet's defense has not given up a point so far tonight. In fact, they uh, had a first and 10. The Spartans did at the 15-yard line after an interception and didn't score. This time, Martins will hand off straight up the middle. Rodgers, uh-uh, nothing doing as Viani stuffs it up, and he may have even lost half a yard. Yeah, it's, 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 tough, it's, it's tough sledding trying to run right up the middle. Look at those big boys. Look at them big boys of Vianney right up the middle. 34, 55, number eight, number 15. These guys are stout down low. They're wide. They play with a very good wide base. And it's hard to move them. It's very hard to go at them. You really have to try to go around them with speed. Julian Fowler lined up as the tailback. You see the sort of a blocking back as a wing on the right side. And I think Vianney jumped offside, and they did. So after... The one yard loss, DeSmet will get the benefit of a defensive penalty and bring up a second down and what will be about eight yards to go. Yeah, it looks like number 11, Nate Thurman, the DN, just got a little bit excited there and jumped the gun. It's, it's a good job using your cadence right here to try to pick up extra yards. Right now you want to try to do anything. Right there, yeah, just, just jumped. Just got gun. a little antsy. It looked like he was rocking in his uh, in his stance and then lunged forward. Toss sweep right side and again the defense pursues well. Julian Fowler with the carry, but he didn't get much. This is a excellent play by the DN or the outside linebacker Devin Ward. Not only stand playing contain, fighting off a blocker, then coming back making a play. That was an awesome job. And, and the technique was beautiful. He gets outside, takes on the blocker, turns the running back, the running back in, then falls back under and makes a play. Great job, great effort. Fowler as the tailback, seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Martins sends a man in motion. That is Rogers, I believe, across the formation. Now he's going to turn, fake the handoff to Fowler, and he's going to run down to the ten to the five. Levels a would-be tackler and goes out of bounds at about the four-yard line. Pick up of eight for Martin. Six, 12 yards on third down for Spartan first down. Good job here as the blitz coming right off the edge, right up the middle, stuffs him. He sees it, keeps the ball, goes first around down, the sidelines, then delivers a blow right here in the end. This is when you know you're upset when you're a quarterback and instead of running out of bounds, you deliver a blow to the defender. First and goal for the Spartans, their deepest penetration offensively into the Viani defense. It's been moved by Fowler. He got forward for maybe a yard or two, but it'll bring up the second and goal. Watch did the defensive tackle Tavion Weary, if we have the replay, 5'11", 285. He didn't make the play, but he disrupted the entire play. Watch number 55, the left D tackle, gets up the field right here and changes the entire, the entire timing is off, the blocking technique is off, all because he was able to get up the field and disrupt that play. Martin's under center on a second and goal. They hand off to Fowler Again. and he is tackled in the backfield. Guess who? Tavion Weary once again gets up the field, 5'11", 285, the junior. Watch him get low and then get skinny, right there gets skinny, gets up the field. That is one heck of an effort. You may want to go, you may want to run the other, other way. Other side, yes. exactly. Tavion Weary, as you mentioned, a uh, junior, 5'11", 285. Gonna spread the field out a little bit here. 
on third and goal. Back to pass. Martins throws it, and no one home. Another disconnect between the quarterback and the receiver. The quarterback throws a fade. The receiver runs a slant. Now you're in a situation where you have to go for it here on fourth down. Nate Martins having a tough time passing the football tonight. 0 of 3 in the second half. Fourth and goal. Spartans want to get some offensive points on the board tonight. Martins looks to the sideline, 15 on the play clock. And he will take the shotgun snap. There it is. Looking, throwing, and pass is incomplete. Intended receiver number 11, Grant Stegman. Defense was there. And we'll have a good look at this one. There's Stegman matched up on the D-back, and he had a step. If that ball's right there, Isaac, it's a touchdown, and, and it should it. have been a touchdown. Absolutely. That's a slant. That's a great call. What, what the Smith figured that they were that the Vianney was going to come with the blitz, so the middle of the field was going to be wide open, throw the slant, it should be a touchdown. The execution, the design, the play call was all perfect. The quarterback gets it out to the receiver. He wasn't able to make the catch. Harris with a handoff, and Morrell, he spins out of a would-be tackler, gets all the way out to the 15-yard line. Gain of about 12. I tell you what, this, this offensive line, but James Kieser, Kieser 6'4", 255 senior, he's really having a great game, number 73. Every single running play, he is putting his man about four to five yards down the field. First and 10 for the Griffins, Golden Griffins, with a minute 20 to go on the third. And now here is the rush to the left side, picking up almost 10 yards, Tion Harris. It's one of the things that he does very well out in open space. He's so tough to get down. He's so tough to grab, and he's so wide. And, he's, and his, 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 his hips, legs, and thighs are so wide and strong. Usually he doesn't go down with the first tackler, and it takes a couple of guys to actually corral him and bring him down. He's got about 140 yards rushing in this game as we near the probably the final play of the third quarter. And this time it's going to be Harris again, tripped up, but gets enough for the first down, pick up a three. And they will move the chains again in what should be, well, no, it won't, because they're going to wind the clock, and they'll have to run one more play here in the third quarter. Wind the clock, and the difference is about three seconds between game and play clock, so they will have to run one more play before the end of the third quarter. Yeah, and they're in complete control of this game. I'm sure there'd be another running play with this offensive line because they're in complete control of this game. There's no reason to put this ball in the air. Harris is going to run to the left side, kind of tried to counter back to the right a little Harris bit when it wasn't the there, but still picks up about two yards on first down. That'll be the end of the third quarter. And it was all Viani as they put up 14 more points in that quarter, and they lead it. 36 to seven, and uh, somewhere out there in the crowd, Angela Sharp is visiting with our family of the game. That's right, I had to come up here. These guys have been cheering all day. So what's going on here? You're cheering for Fiani. Yes, my dad is the head football coach and my brother coaches our D-line, so. Awesome, all right, so who do you have with you? Yep, this is my sister-in-law, Heidi. This is Joe's wife. Uh, this is my fiance, Joe. Uh, that's my mom on the other side of you. All right, this is mom. Now, you know what? I got to tell you, I tried to talk to Coach Day. You did. I did, and he ran away from me. So, so I'm a little mad, but you guys are still our Lions Choice family of the game. Yeah. Lions Choice serving real roast beef. It's fresh. It's good. Plus, I visited that Hampton location, and it's really awesome. The Corey guy was so nice, so good customer service. So will you tease him with this and not let him have any of this yes. gift card? Yes. Oh, I love Lion's Choice. It's the best. <laughs> all right, good. Now, Coach doesn't get Thank any. Thank you. No, no, he gets none of it. It's all for me. It's all for you, and you can share with the kids. <laughs> and I get a Go Viani? Go Viani! Your Lion's Choice family of the game. All right. Paul Day's family, and uh, Paul Day, longtime head coach here in the St. Louis area. 
And uh, his wife just as bubbly as he is, apparently, because uh, they, they share a personality. Paul Day is a very, very friendly man, and you can tell his family uh, is as well. His wife there in the crowd, as well as his, uh, there you see a shot of his son, the offensive line coach. And Harris throws, Cam, or excuse me, uh, Coleman, a little bit behind him, so an incomplete pass for Tion Harris. Yeah, he had open for the for the post route. It looks like he tried to gun that ball in. If he just lays it out and puts it out towards the middle of the field and have T and have Coleman just run under it, he had a step or two. He could have ran on it for a touchdown, but he tried to gun that ball in. I haven't seen him do that all night. Try to gun that ball in from that from that distance. As they will reset the play clock on a third and about seven. Harrison shotgun formation sends Morrell to his right, looking. He's going to tuck and run. Now he's in trouble. Now he might go back to pass again, directing some traffic. Throws down the field, looking for Campbell or Kelman to make a play, and he did. Oh, no, he didn't. Dropped the ball. And Coleman looks to be a little shaken up. He landed flat on his back after he was not able to come up with that football and uh, he will get himself off the field so that's good that he's able to get up but a fourth down play coming up for the Golden Griffins. Yeah this is one of the things that Harris does well it's basically freelance look to the right doesn't like it nice stuff looking at the line see where they at buying time for the receivers basically. Now he tells us he tells Coleman go deep I'll, I'll fit one in to you there Good ball, actually. The ball is right on his hands, just couldn't squeeze it. And the punt for Viani is a good one from Schuler. And the tackle back at the 32 yard line, 34 yard line, excuse me. But Paul Day, I talked about him. We met his family, the Lions Choice family of the game down there. And uh, uh, 25 years in coaching, 24 as a head coach and longtime head coach at uh, Fort Zumwalt West. And then four years ago, the Viani uh, team was able, or actually administration, I guess, was able to pluck him away from a good situation out in O'Fallon. And uh, now in his fourth season down at, that is Paul Day. You see the uh, shot of him on the sideline. And now Martins with a pass and right through the hands of his receiver. Fowler can't come up with it. Yeah, and that ball's just a tad bit behind him. The passing game's been off all night. If he puts that ball in front, then he's able, the receiver's able to catch it in stride and make a play. But that ball is behind him. He had to stop his motion and try to turn around and catch it and wasn't able to make it. Martins has uh, it's been rough, let's just put it that way. Unofficially, I have him uh, five of 23 passing tonight. Back to pass again, good deep ball, but too deep. Overthrows his receiver by three or four yards. And that'll bring up third down and 10. Yeah, you're not gonna complete many passes when you're throwing it deep over the field in double coverage. You know, those are one of those routes where it's okay to dump the ball down. He had a, the, his back was out in the flat to the left side and he was wide open. If he dumps it down there, the back makes a move. He's able to run up the sideline, picks up the first down, and picks up 10, 15 yards. Takes a shot deep in double coverage and brings up third and long. Martins, the sophomore quarterback for the Spartans. Drops back, throws, and almost through the interception again. Again, over through Stegman, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Yeah, there's nothing going on with the passing game. There's no doubt they have to punt this ball here. Defense is going to have to try to find a way to, to create a turnover. I would think that Viani, being in complete control of this game, 36-7 to here in the fourth quarter, with 11 minutes left, that they will run the football. So I would expect for this met to have eight, nine men in the box couple of guys try to hold up the runner and then try to strip the ball to get the ball back. Yeah, Myers with a high booming punt. Bounces at about the 37 and then takes a big 
just met bounce inside the 20 down to about the 18 and Myers has been the MVP for DeSmet tonight. He is uh, very, very impressive with what he can do with punting a football. That's an MVP they don't want. <laughs> you know, whenever your punter is your MVP, you're probably in trouble for that game, and that's exactly where they are, 36 to 7. As Viani comes back out for their next series, we want to thank. Uh, Millennium Restoration as uh, they are a proud sponsor here of the Bomberito Automotive Group Prep Zone High School Game of the Week as Tion Harris will hand it off to Coleman. He will bounce around, finally get about uh, seven, eight yards. A little bit more about Millennium Restoration and Development. They are restoring neglected buildings throughout the St. Louis region. We really appreciate their sponsorship here of what we're doing on Friday nights. Now they're in a situation 36 to seven, I believe if they're, if they're able to put this ball into the end zone, I mean, you've set up a situation where you're basically in the turbo clock, turbo clock area. 10 and a half minutes left and a second down and one for the Griffins. They have the benefit of time on their side. They can run the play clock down, and they do to about five, and Harris will run it up the middle and pick up about 12, and a first down for the Griffins. That's been their main focus the entire night is basically going right at this DeSmet small size defense. And again, watch number 73, James Keeser. He doesn't get a, he pulls from right to left, doesn't get a great block, but gets in front of the defender. That's all you need to do. Get in front of the defender, hit him a little bit, and wait for your backer to get past you. So this offensive line is, has done a great job all night. Harris nearing 160 yards rushing in this game. Hands off to Morrell. He's been a workhorse tonight, and he'll pick up seven. Morell has also uh, carried the rock 20 times tonight as well. This is just a great, this is going to be a great win for Viani. You know, their last couple of games, they were, you know, blown out of their last two games. So to come into this game on the road, facing a young, talented team in this man, and to get the win, we got nine, nine minutes, 30 sec seconds left. They'll get the win here. That'll give them some real good feelings moving forward for the rest of the season. Going to have a flag against Viani, an illegal procedure. And you talk about those last two games. Let's just go back. They lost to Kirkwood, talking about the, uh, the uh, Griffins now. Lost to Kirkwood by 22, then a seven-point loss to a very good Providence Catholic team out of the Chicago area. They played battle 55-52. to 52. That was a uh, seesaw battle no pun intended back and forth and then Chaminade beat them by 15 a week ago they're going to get a victory here tonight against Desmet but uh, this is the tune-up for them because next week they will be at St. Louis U High and that's going to be that's a much tough. tougher Absolutely. contest than this one tonight Absolutely. Harris with the carry and he's still going down the field the pile just keeps moving took four or five Spartans with him all the way down to about the 37 yard line 23-yard pickup for Tion Harris. Great job there. Look at number 70, Thomas Willett. Lead the way, good block right there. And he doesn't stop. Watch him follow his runner all the way down the field here late and make sure he gets him up off the ground. Thomas As Willett. he's shoving those <laughs> dismet players out of the way. 6'3", 270, just a junior. Yeah, that'll do. Yep. That'll work. That'll get it done. Quarterback Tion Harris, also a junior. Morrell gets the carry. And no, it's Harris, and he's still going. Oh, my. Lost the football, though. And it's going to be recovered by the Spartans. But what an outstanding, outstanding run by Tion Harris before he coughed that one up. No, they're going to say Biani ended up with the football. How did that happen? How did how did Vianney We're going to take a look at this ball. one. There is 
Michael I don't know Brown how this happened. Look at this. Right Look hands. at this run before the fumble, though. This is unbelievable. Pulls it out of the belly of Morrell. Makes a couple guys miss, you know, out of nowhere. Knees don't go down. Still pumping. Still going. He's going to cut it back to the right side. Gets stripped right at the end. And I thought for sure a Spartan just fell right on top of that football. We'll see it right here. And I thought Brian Perry. He must not Dove have it. right on top of it right there. That's How he didn't get it. Yeah, I don't know. Someone stronger got it on the bottom of the pile, I guess. And yeah, he calls So a timeout is taken by the Viani Golden Griffins, and uh, it's nearing about that time of the game. Mr. Bird, that we need to name our Carpenters Union hard hat player of the game. Well, that's Defense going to, player. Well, that's going to be when it comes to a hard hat player of the game. Mm -hmm. Can I? Okay, Carpenters so the Union. player of the game is going to be Tion Harris. I mean, he's the, the quarterback of, of Vianney's had a really, really strong game. Turned it over. Um, I believe a couple of times, but threw some really good passes, ran the ball well, and, and you know, he's Mr. Everything for this offense. If Vianney's going to do anything this season, everything is on his shoulder because he's able to do everything so well. For the hard hat, I would love to give it to the entire offensive line, really, of, of do we have the, that many Vianney. Hats? Probably don't have that many hats. So if I had to pick one, I'm gonna. Can I give it to James Keeser, number 73, the offensive line of the Viani, 6'4", 255. He had a wonderful game. The left tackle did a really good job. Every time they run to the right, he pulls from left to right and blows up a linebacker. And he's had a great job. He's done a great job tonight. Second down and two, and this time it will be. Coleman running to the right side and just runs out of bounds at about the 23. Has enough for the first down, though. They say he stepped out at the 25, but still a pickup of five and a first down. Yeah, Dismet just didn't just didn't have enough tonight. It, it, it's going to be interesting interesting to see what they do moving forward for the rest of the season, as they have a, uh, they had they do have a couple of tough games coming up. So they're going to have to put this thing together, especially offensively, to try to get some, some, some scores. Some, because offensively, we knew they can score some points, but tonight they just been off. They stay in uh, MCC action next week as they will be at Chaminade next Friday night. That's what's on tap for the Spartans. Now it's going to be Morrell getting it down to about the 12-yard line. Pick up of 12 for him. And the Golden Griffins looking to... Get some more points on the board here. Yeah, knocking on the door once again. So so next week, DeSmet has to go and, and play. Chaminade. They go and play Chaminade next week, who's a very yeah, tough, tough opponent as well. Somehow they're going to have to put this offense back together to, to shoot it out with these teams simply because their defensive line just isn't as big, strong, and experienced enough to stay with teams that are really physical. Harris hands it off. Morell to the left side, gets down to about the seven yard line. I would like to mention though, Morell has had a very good game as well. I believe he has um, probably, a, a, I believe a couple of touchdowns tonight. Mm -hmm. So he's played a very strong game as well. So it, Don't forget, we talked about uh, the Spartans next week at Chaminade and the Golden Griffins at St. Louis U High. Well, where will we be, Isaac? It looks like uh, we're headed to Edwardsville, a big Southwestern Conference matchup. Always a good one when the East St. Louis Flyers and the Edwardsville Tigers hook up, and we'll have that game for you next Friday night right here on the Bobarito Prep Zone High School Game of the Week. East St. Louis is doing their thing tonight, up 46 to nothing on Belleville West. And you were all game. excited because that's a homecoming game yep. over there, right? Yep, it, 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 it's a homecoming game. So they, you know, my brother is out there now watching that game. So he's texting me, letting me know what's going on. He said it's crazy fans out there, and East St. Louis is having their way. East St. Louis is a tough 
tough football team year in, year out. We're going to see them next week as the Edwardsville Tigers. No matter, you know, Edwardsville is normally upper echelon in that Southwestern Conference, but uh, it doesn't matter if they're having an up year or a down year. The East St. Louis game is always a good one between those two teams. You see a swing pass to the right side, and Zerwig with the catch down at the five-yard line. Well, you say, why are they throwing the ball right there? That's really an extension of a running play. It's, 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 it's just a quick out dive. He goes in, comes out. You, you're, it's, it's almost 100% you're going to complete that play, so the clock is going to continue to run. So that's a pass play, but it's really an extension of a run. You got a little bit of a look at the route that was run by Zerwig, and it was it was to perfection. I mean, just looked like he was going inside, quick cut, outside ball in the air when he made his cut. Good catch, good pickup, and it's third and goal from the five. They're going to try to get Morell his third touchdown of the night right up the middle and into the end zone. Mickey Morell, his third touchdown of the night, makes it 42 to 7 right up the middle, second half, when Vianney goes in at halftime at the end of the first half, their coaching staff said, listen, our offensive line is dominating. Let's just put the ball into their hands. Look at this offensive line. Just move guys out of the way. The holes are wide open. And and very easy game plan in his second half. First time he got touched by a maroon jersey, he was in the end zone. He was already one yard deep in the end zone before he got touched. And the extra point by Larman is pounded through, and it is 43-7 to in favor of the Vianney Golden Griffins as uh, we will have a turbo clock for the remainder of this one until Desmet can get it below 35 points again and uh, it's going to be tough because the clock will only stop we are going to show you here the h and r block of the game and that was cam coleman on a touchdown run by mickey morrell around the right side watch this block and you mentioned it right after he drops that pass doesn't hang his head Gets a good block to spring Morrell around the right side. Just get in front of the defender. That's all you have to do. Don't have to be right. a devastating there block. There it is. Right there. And it's not a devastating block, but he did his job. He got in front of the, the, the defender and occupied the defender while the runner was able to get around and get through. That's all you want to do as a receiver. Listen, you know, us receivers, you know, we don't have big dominating blocks like, like offensive linemen and fullbacks. We really don't even like to block. But occasionally you'll get one of us just like there get in there and make a very good block coleman dropped the touchdown didn't bang his head says you know what i'm gonna help my buddy out get in here get me a good block and the buddy went down the sideline i tried to build the uh build the the moment there and say it was a touchdown run it was not he got run out of bounds at the five yard line but still the h and r block of the game by by coleman that was tremendous to spring him down the sideline by a receiver. Let's give some of these receivers <laughs> some credit. I like that. I like that. Coleman's Mark. a good player. Coleman's a good player. You know, 5'11", 175. He's only a sophomore, yep. Yep. so they're going to have him for a couple of more years. So that's, you know, he's getting a really good experience here. This is a young team of Vianney. You know, th their quarterback's going to be back. Their receiver's going to be back. They got some juniors on that offensive line. I mean, this is a team that's going to be really good coming in the next the, come next year. Another pooch kick that time by Viani down to about the 35-yard line. And you're right, as you look at the uh, offensive line for the Golden Griffins, they start four seniors, just one junior, that Thomas Willett, uh, number 70. He's, he's a junior. Everyone else is a senior on that offensive line. But the skill positions, you have Coleman, who's a sophomore, Harris and Morrell are both juniors. So, uh, you know, you find those guys, the, the bigs, to uh, kind of create some space for you up front, and you might be onto something. Absolutely. Absolutely. The future is, is, is bright for, for Vianney and, and Paul Day, the head coach. And Martins with a running clock in effect. Ball is tipped up in the air and incomplete on first down. Yeah, this passing game, you know, I was, I was excited to see this passing game uh, as we talked at pregame. I was, I was really excited to see the passing game of this Met because I know, I knew Nate Martin's coming into this game. 
is very effective throwing the ball down the field. It just wasn't happening for him today. And that one's going to be picked off. Barkham with the interception, and he'll go the other way at the 40, 45. Big block behind the play. Barkham still going down the right sideline. He's going to reverse it across the field. Still going, gets spun down, and now he's going down the sideline. Nether block gets down inside the 20 yard line to about the 15. And they're going to throw a flag back here at the 45 for playing football. I thought the block was good. It wasn't a crack. I mean, if it's a crackback block, they call, but it looks like the defender. The offensive player that turned out to be the defender, it looks like he saw the block coming and you're told not to throw the flag if the defender sees the block coming. Let's see if he's he got his head up. He's running right into him. Yeah, that I is, don't know why that's a flag. That's, wow. That's a flag for playing violent football. That's all yeah, that is. Yeah, I, I under his head is. Oh, there we go. And there's another one. There's and another it, one head to, you know, face to face. I mean, didn't hit him from behind. Yeah, that was the, I, I apologize, the second one there at the 50-yard line is where they threw the flag, but maybe a little bit more questionable on the second one. The first one was not a penalty. should not have been called a yeah, penalty, and it wasn't. Yeah, let's see number they, they give this to. Well, they won't because say. They don't say numbers in high school, but, you know. But a big, uh, big hit nevertheless, and uh, it is going to negate a big return by number 14, Hunter Barkham. Well, it's been one of those nights. It's been one of those nights for Martins. They called it unsportsmanlike conduct. Unsportsmanlike conduct. But they called it on both teams. Now they're saying that it's offset. But, well, they called one penalty on the, on, on the, on the block. Then, I guess, after the play, it was the unsportsmanlike conduct that on, offsets. On met, yeah. yeah. So we'll play it way back here from the 30-yard line. And maybe a little bit of uh, fuel to the fire for this rivalry between DeSmet and Vianney. And I remember back in the day, this game used to be played at Bush Stadium. It was a doubleheader, St. Louis U High against CBC. Actually, this was the warm-up game every year, DeSmet against Vianney, followed by CBC against DeSmet at the old Bush Stadium. Started going to that game, I think, when I was in fifth grade. Went there for probably, what, 10 years straight I was at that game, and then they stopped doing it. We're going to see the second team offensive line come into the game. Still the skill positions look to be, well, no, they got, they got the backup quarterback in there as well. Marik Bias in at quarterback now, number three. Good job, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, Barkham guys. is going to be the quarterback, and he's going to hand off to Bias. And good job by 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 Vianney and and Coach Paul Day of of bringing out bringing out the starters that the letting the second team go in there get a little bit of playing time. It's a running clock, so you may only get five or six plays out of this thing. But um, you know, these are the guys that's probably going to be playing next year, as as they have four, I believe we talked about earlier, four seniors on this team. Four seniors on the, on the offensive line, line. you know, yes. the school skill positions. We already talked about that. Most of their skill position players are sophomores or juniors. You see a bunch of hankies fly in on this great run by Bias, but it's going to be all for naught as a couple of different flags. And you see the Viani sideline is really pumped for those uh, second teamers getting some playing time and having some success. But this one will be brought back on a penalty. And you see Paul, you see Paul Day there on the live action looking at uh, one of his players and yelling at him. He saw it too. Alexander Moore is going to be flagged for, I believe it's going to be a hold on the right side. And you see it come in right there. So a big run by Bias is uh, negated. Bias wasn't, wasn't trying to run out of bounds there. <laughs> he was not. He and look at the sideline. The, the sideline is going nuts right now. Look at him. Yeah, he delivered the blow right there before going down. Look, lots this of, is uh, lots this of excitement over there on the Viani side. Yeah, this is an opportunity to get some other guys play. Look, the starters, you know, they go against the second team every day in practice. They know how hard they work. So it's great for them to, to get a win and a blowout um, situation that it gives these second, these second teamers that don't see the, the field a lot 
a time to get on the field and let the and, and, and let these starters cheer for them. Believe me when I tell you there's a little extra something in it that it is Desmet that you're playing against right now. The rivalry, another MCC rival, and there we see Bias again, and he's got another run all the way out to the 35-yard line, and another flag flies in, this one laying at back at the 25-yard line. I think they're going to bring it back. Right in the hole, right as he was breaking through the hole, they're going to call a hold on Viani. That's the other thing that stops the clock <laughs> when it's a turbo clock. They stop it for a flag, and that's uh, why these last couple of moments are taking some time here, just 2.23 left, and as soon as they wind the clock, it won't stop until there is a penalty or a timeout or a score. They wind it. I don't think Viani's second team is really interested of letting the clock run down. They're trying to get as uh, many these plays guys, they're like, in. Get the play in, get yeah, the play in. I know. Yeah, you can see they're chomping at the bit right now. There they go. And it'll be biased again. He's strung out to the right side and goes up the sideline, squirts up the sideline and got something out of nothing. On the right side, I want to make mention, uh, we haven't really said his name at all. Keegan Hudler, number 48, has been in the game periodically as an H-back, a blocking back. So uh, I don't think I've said his name all night, as a matter of fact, but he has been out there on some key plays out there as a lead blocker. Senior, six foot, 225 pounds, defensive tackle. He, he, he's done a good job tonight as well. You see him lined up sort of in the tight end position, more of a wing back to the left side there. There he is, big senior, as Barkham gets the play from the sideline, and they should be in no hurry. There's 10 on the play clock. Oh, they're in hurry because they want to try to get well, as they, many plays they, in They as are. The, the coaches aren't. <laughs> right. Bias with the carry, breaking tackles, and gets out to about the 19-yard line. He runs hard. He does. For a little guy, he's really uh, got a little oomph, 5'9", 160. And he breaks tackles. Is this another team coming in? No, this is fourth down. They're going to punt here. <laughs> okay. Schuler will punt it away for Viani, but he won't have to do it until there's about 19 seconds left to go in the game. And we're going to have a uh, second team returner here as well. First team special teams anyway for Viani. That's one that you don't mess around with and put in a backup punter or anything, even if you have a backup punter on the high school level. Schuler, it's kind of a knuckleball, and it is covered up at the 49-yard line by DeSmet. And that's going to do it. That won't even stop the clock on a change of possession. The victory will go the way of the Viani Golden Griffins. 43-7 to is our final over the Spartans of Dismet. Rather dominating game tonight by Viani as they run the record to two and four on the season and they drop Dismet to two and four as well. Head coach Paul Day has got to be really satisfied with this type of victory in a dominating performance where their defense doesn't give up a single touchdown on the road against Dismet who quarterback came in red hot, offense came in red hot, scoring a lot of points. So this has to make this coaching staff of Viani very, very happy moving forward. They get out of here with a blowout victory. They get out of here with no injuries. And they get out of here with a little bit of momentum going into next week. Yeah, absolutely. We mentioned next week for DeSmet, they will be at Chaminade as uh, that should be another tough MCC matchup for them and for the Viani Golden Griffins. They will travel down to Kings Highway in Oakland area down there and take on the St. Louis U High Junior Billikens who uh, at last check were getting handled pretty well by CBC tonight. We had a first quarter score of that one. Haven't had any updates since then but uh, so St. Louis U High will be coming off of a loss. Viani coming off of a Oh, well, you would think they're coming off of a loss. Viani coming off of a big win over a rival in Desmet. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes as uh, Angela Sharp is working hard out there to get our post-game 
post-game uh, interviews lined up, and we're going to head down to the sideline. Looks like we're first going to visit with our Vanderock College hard hat winner of the game. That's James Kaiser. Take it away, Angela. All right, I've got our Vanderock hard hat player of the game. They call him Jimmy, they tell me. You are our hard hat player of the game. Now, when I dragged you over here, was that the rest of the line cheering you on? The whole team. That was the whole team cheering you on. So what was it like for you in today's game? I mean, it was kind of a blowout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, it was exciting. I mean, came out, uh, you know, I think it was going to be a hard game. It was hard, but, you know, put it through them. Offensive line killed them. And you guys have, you've played very well, but your record doesn't necessarily reflect that. How is this win going to help the momentum for next week? Uh, it should help a lot. I mean, you know, we've had a lot of close, tough games, but getting a good win like this will definitely help. Well, and how does it feel knowing that you're the Vatterat hard hat player of the game? Very good, very right. good. I expect to see you wear that when you walk away from me, all right? <laughs> Back to you. All right, thank you, Angela. Jimmy Kaiser, that's uh, that's impressive, uh, you know, uh, hard work by that offensive line. There's no question. Yes, and he knows it. when you're down in the trenches like he, he, he is, he knows that they dominated. He knows that's where the game was won. Um, and he let you know about it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was, uh, we looked at each other when he said that. That was impressive. We'll, we'll send it back down to Angela, our Carpenters Union player of the game, and the quarterback, Tion Harris. I've got our Carpenters District Union player of the game, Tion Harris. All right, you're all over the place. What is it like for you to kind of lead this team? Um, well, it's them. They, they put trust into me, and when they put trust into me, I just work hard for them, and the good things come out. Now, you know, the last, I, talk, I talked to the hard hat player of the game. He also said it was a whole team effort. Is Vianney a whole team effort? Yes, we are, and we all, we all work together, and we work hard together. All right, now, you, you got the win. It's going to help. What's it going to be like taking this win into next week? Uh, so we got a win. It's going to make us want to play harder and keep a, a winning streak going on. And, and what was it like for you when you noticed you were definitely going to win this game? Exciting. We haven't had that in a while, and we're happy about it. And we hope we can keep winning. That's right. You guys have played really well, and now maybe you're you're finally going to keep up with the record, right? Yes, ma'am. I hope uh, so. All right. Well, good luck next week. That is your Carpenters District Union Player of the Game. Back to you, Kevin and Isaac. Love the hair. Yeah. Love yeah. the hair. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Angela. Up. Thank you, thank you, uh, Tion Harris and uh, Jimmy Kaiser as well. Our Carpenters District Union Player of the Game and Tion Harris. Veteran College hard hat winner was Jimmy Kaiser, the offensive line. You see it there on the screen. Next week, a big Southwestern Conference matchup over on the east side of the river. East St. Louis Flyers and the Edwardsville Tigers. That's going to wrap it up here from DeSmet High School. Thanks for being with us here tonight and watching it on your Sunday morning on Channel 11. Our final once again, Viotti 43, DeSmet 7. For Isaac Bird and for Angela Sharp, I'm Kevin Paulus. So long from DeSmet High School.